Hey there, gang gals, the Welsh Hunter here, back with yet again another 100% achievement and trophy guide, and this time we are getting it all in Soma. This was developed by Frictional Games, Blitworks, and was published by Frictional Games, and is usually available for about £24.99, but it's free on Xbox Game Pass right now. So, as I always say, bruh, the hell you doing, man? Get Game Pass. This isn't an Elon Musk $8 Twitter thing, I swear down. Um, so, we play as Simon Jarrett. A seemingly normal man in a normal life until he gets thrust upon some unknown horrors where machines think they're people the rise of the machines if you will by the way that will happen by the way so be nice to your stuff you know stroke it caress it tell it you love them dearly etc and um, anyway moving off track slightly achievements wise this is all very easy there's basically 10 altogether nine story related ones and one missable towards the end of the game but it's actually very hard to miss now what makes this extra easy is we will be playing on safe mode, so the monsters can't actually hurt you. Again, obviously if you want the full experience, play on normal mode, but for the purposes of this walkthrough, we're going to be playing on safe mode, um, so it basically ends up being a puzzle story rather than getting your ass bit at every opportunity. So all in all, you're looking at around 3 to 5 hours-ish to get this done. So with that being said then, let us begin. And like I said, as soon as you get the choice, you can go safe or normal, Honestly, the, the atmosphere, even on safe mode, it's still going to make you crap your pants slightly. So, if you've got a spare pair, then, uh, you know, it's always handy to have. Just because, you know the monsters can't hurt you, but you can hear them chasing you in the background and stuff. And, uh, Philip K. Dick. <laughs> well, unlucky Phil Dick. Um, yeah, the, 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 honestly, the atmosphere is still unbelievable in this game. Even though, the, like I said, the monsters can't hurt you, but... Just the thought of them chasing you and trying to eat your ass is just not uh, a, a, a bite you, sorry. Oh. Yeah, well, we'll see anyway. But as for now, a little bit of a cutscene as we get into the game. Ashley, I need to tell you something. My name is Richard Dick. Yes, Dick Dick. Why now? Who's David Lynch? Why is there never enough time? For what? Who's David Munchie? Well, he was just a stoner in college who changed his second name um, <laughs> to, to Munchies. I wonder why. Anyway, answer the phone here on your desk. You're going to be pressing the right trigger to um, interact with things in the world. Uh, so obviously it's going to be left stick to move, right stick to look. We're going to press A to jump, B to crouch, Y to toggle your flashlight later on. Uh, left trigger and left stick to sprint. Uh, right trigger again to interact with and grab objects left bumper to throw objects and you can rotate objects if you want and then you press the right bumper to lean around corners but we're not going to need to lean this time so we need to basically find a bottle of tracer fluid so it seems to only be in one location but you have to look first so go to the right have a look into the kitchen cabinet you need to actually uh let when you interact with a door as we go towards the end here in next to the bathroom to open up things you need to um hold the left stick up and down as you can see so have a look in the computer desk here this is where the bottle of tracer fluid is so pick it up again with the right trigger press the right trigger to kiss it apparently um no, no to give it a drink head towards the door and then we can begin to head out and head for a nice little cutscene where nothing's happening for the next couple of minutes now there is a phone call that you're going to get from somebody called jesse the grimoire who looks like a specific turnip head um, but again, for the that's just for a little bit more story, if you want to find out what's going on and who Simon actually is. If not, just like me, I'm just going to reject the phone call and we're just going to arrive at Osgood. Osgood? No, Osbad. Very couple of interesting characters there. Um, the old FBI agent who is obviously staring at you. Maybe he's doing that weird drawing thing and he's going to put it on TikTok for everyone to see just how good he is. TikTok family. <laughs> By the way, I was being sarcastic. TikTok sucks and it's very, very cringy. Um, all right, not with all stuff. There's quite a few good things on there. Right. 
when we begin here, we're going to directly move straight in front of us. And you're going to see a little keypad here. Now, the key code is going to be 2501. So 2501. That will open up the door for us. And then we can actually push our way in. Just breaking into Mr. Stone and Munchie's lab. Go towards the end door. Open it up. And Dr. Munchie will be there. Is he working or is he smoking? Oh, he's, he's working. Okay. Hello, Mr. Munchies. <laughs> Where's the goods at, brah? Actually, you're helping me right now. Is this part of your thesis work? Yeah, it's a study I'm doing with my colleague, Paul Berg. We hope to design a gentle way to work with brain reconstruction to help people like you. Oh, did you uh, take the tracer fluid? Yes, yes I did. Great. Well, we can start whenever you're ready. Let me just get this out of the way. You are Simon Jarrett, correct? Right. Toronto, Canada, David Munchie. Born 1988, July 16th. Right. Flat neurograph, version six. Good. All files in order. Will this hurt? It's just a scan. It'll hurt about as much as getting your picture taken. Indians thought cameras would steal their souls. That's so. Well, let's hope they're wrong. <laughs> Ready? Say cheese. So, now the story begins then, and I gotta say, this is a fantastically written story. Maybe Munchie got too stoned and uh, thought things were after him and destroyed the lab, maybe. So, as we get out, by the way, this game is dark, so I would highly advise to, um, Pop your brightness up if you can. Uh, just go straight in front of you anyway, towards the red light. Because like I said, this game does get quite dark. Push the lever down. That's going to flick on some lights for us. Lovely. Have a look just below you there. And you need to, again, pick it up with the right trigger. And then the left bumper to throw it. So you're going to have to throw at it twice to get the broken window out of the way. And job done. Right. Drop down. Head to the right. Okay, there's no monsters here just yet. And on the, on the right here is the first sort of lever that you can push with to interact with the door. Get rid of that. Push open the button there, or click the button to open up the door, and head through. Head to the left until you can see the path of sign and interact with this bit of what kind of looks like Fallout body armor. I mean, it's not just Fallout body armor, it's, it's all body armor. So, little scene's gonna happen. They, I think they basically act as the collectibles, but you don't need to worry about the collectibles. Head through the door, head to the right. Again, we're gonna be pressing the left, trig uh, left trigger to sprint. Keep heading to the right, down these couple of steps. And now we're going to head to the right until we can see this next door that we can interact with and open up. Now, again, there's nothing after you here. This is what makes this game so incredibly tense and atmospheric. This bit will happen. So don't worry about that, you are going to have to sort of quote-unquote die right there. And you'll just end up wherever the hell we are now. So turn to the right, or basically sort of straight behind you now, to head back into this trashed area. And you're going to pick up what is called the Omni Tool, and this is going to come in mega handy throughout the rest of the game. Let's head back out of the door, turn to the right, and then you can see these lights on the floor. Head up to the right, up these little bits of steps. And keep going down, there's going to be an open door on your left, ignore that, keep going straight, and you're going to see the next door that we can open up. So yes, it is definitely, it is one of those, it's a very good game, but it's quite dark, so I'm trying to tell you where to go, what to do. Head through the door, and now we can upgrade the Omni tool. So pop it down with the right trigger, and then you need to interact with the computer screen, and then eventually it's all going to pop up, and it's all going to go well. Right, now what we need to do is go to Omni tool and unlock uh, Toolbox. So unlock the toolbox right there, click out. Now just to the left of the Omni tool, there are a bunch of chips there. So make sure to pick up one of those chips, put it in the Omni tool. There you go, sorry, a little bit of an edit there, but you just gotta put it in the Omni tool. So pick up the chip, put it in the Omni tool, go back onto it. Now say manage tool chip and update. So again, I, I do apologize if I am, if I do go quite quick on some of these parts. Um, I, I, I do, again, it's one of those that 
I'm trying to go as sort of fast slash slow as we can so you can keep up. Anyway, after you've upgraded the chip, pick up your Omni tool and then we're good to go. Now we can exit out, go to the left, left again, until we're in this sort of red room area, straight, left again, and, well, spooky stuff's going to happen, but we're going to go to the right, so don't worry about that thing. Go to the right, you're going to see this big circular door. <gasps> oh my god, it's so spooky. A door? Oh no! Press the right trigger there to get access Grantino. Again, lots of stuff bashy bash is going to happen. You literally don't have to worry about it because you're on safe mode. Not that anything, even if you're on normal mode, nothing's happening anyway. So just keep heading down. We're going to head up the steps. If you can actually get through and not walk into the side of the door, which would be handy. Head to the right. And we're into this weird room. So what you're going to need to do, again, you can hear the noises. Now you need to interact. Press the right trigger with this weird looking thing. Now basically, if you're playing on normal mode, this is kind of like your health pickup. So anytime you see one of these, there are plenty around in the game, but every time you see one of these, it gives you a big blue aura. And apparently that's one of those that um, give you some health. So again, that's only if you're playing a normal mode. Safe mode, you're obviously safe. Right, interact with the door. That's going to open up the way, as is the um, purpose of doors. We're going to head in again by pressing the right trigger, rather than me trying to jump in for some particular reason. Good going, me. I'll just crawl on through for the time being. So here we are then, we are starting the Site Upsilon level, effectively now. So to the left is where the button is. We are now into the um, uh, space control area, or the, the, whatever the hell it's called. So if you, what you're going to do is go straight ahead. What you need to do is get rid of these, see the two sort of power cords connected to these, what are called WAUs, W-A-U devices. Unplug that one, and you can just drop it, and then unplug the other one just by the other computer bit there. And there we go, stop, it's done. And now what we're going to do is speak to, as we interact with the button here, we're going to speak to, eventually, in just a moment, our friend Catherine. Right, so, this is a manual boot sequence. What you've got to do, there's three red buttons. So what you have to do is, you can press the red left button, and then press the middle red button when the upper bar on the screen is in the green area. And then do the same with the bottom one. So press the right one when the middle, when it's green on the bottom, press the right button. Sorry, hopefully that, I did go a little bit quick there, so hopefully that, that wasn't too confusing. Um, otherwise, you can just interact with it here. It's pretty much going to unlock this now and do this um, on its own. And it's basically just going to be another cutscene cat where we are going to speak to Catherine Chun. I was going to add more names to Chun, but uh, no, Chun's good. Um, it will take a while for the cut whole cutscene and things to prepare, so she will pop a... Butt ski on in just a second. Oh, what is it? What? What's happening? Hello? Is there anyone there? Oh, hey, hey, can you hear me? I hear you. Uh, Absalon, what's going on? Uh, I, I have no idea. I, I just sort of woke up here. In the room right now? Uh, it, it was it was like a, a seat with a helmet. Is that right? Uh, what's your name? I, I'm Simon Jarrett. And what do you? Ah, oh, signal. Oh, damn relays. Where are you now? Uh, uh, uh some place dealing with electrical power. I, I'm not sure if it's a plant or a transformer. Uh, yeah, you're probably in a thermal plant somewhere. You want to go upstairs to the comm center. It's the room with the dome ceiling. Uh, hey, look, look. This place is not. A there's something seriously wrong here. Hello? I'm sorry. Simon. Simon Jarrett. 
He's the Torontoist guy in history. From the town of Toronto, he's about to get fudged debris. Right, after the cutscene then, you're going to get your first achievement of the game and we can open the door onto the left, awakening the call. Like I said, 9 out of these 10 are story related. So you should get the same ones on screen. So head all the way down. Uh, what we're going to do is head down the ladder, or you can just drop off. It literally doesn't matter to jump, because, uh, you know, this happens anyway. Right, a few things to do in this area. Turn directly to your right, and you're going to see the uh, Upsilon sign at the top there. So head all the way to the right, and we're going to go up the... <laughs> Again, we're going to go up the steps, interact with this lever here, and then start heading up. That's basically, you can go through the steam, obviously that's fine. Interact with this next lever to basically um, get rid of the hatch behind you. Now we're going to keep on heading up the steps, and this is what I mean. There's a robot that's after you, he can't hurt you on safe mode, but it's still bloody tense. <laughs> so as we get up to this top room, head to the right, and you're going to see a door right at the end of the hallway here. So, open it up with your big massive finger pointing finger. Dead guy just chilling. I mean, he's really chilling. He ain't, he ain't doing nout now. Mr. Carl Seaman. Simkin. Sorry. I need my reading glasses on. So anyway, head back after you get Mr. Seaman's, Mr. Semkin's um, key card. Head all the way past the stairs. And there are two computers. We're going to track with the very left one here. And the key code should always be the same then, it's, it should be 0722. I think there's only once in this game where something is randomized, so 0722, press OK. Now what you're going to need to do is go into Power Manager, and Flow Control, which is in the bottom left-hand corner, switch that boy on. So switch it on. The Flow Control, well, somebody needs a uh, maxi pad. <laughs> Uh, sorry, just joking. I'm so sorry. Right, head all the way back to the opposite side where Mr. Seaman was laying. It's just easier. I, I keep forgetting the key. Uh, go past Seaman and head to the left. Head inside this little uh, little room and directly in front of you here is going to be the lever, which you're going to need to pull. It is literally got a big note by it, if you can see it. It looks like a time hourglass. There it is. Read this, bruh. I was elected to lead, not to read. So, after that, we're going to head back to go to the right, back past Mr. Semkin Seamanskin, Seaman skin. <laughs> and again, <laughs> there's going to be lots of noises, robots going to be there. So go back to that same computer, go back to Power Manager, turn the flow control off, and then the comm center on. So comm center, which will be in the top right-hand corner. There we go. Now what we'll be able to do is flip the lever just by these stairs so we can start heading up. So, again, obviously just ignore the robot if you're on safe mode or try and hide until he baggers off. Interact with this lever by the stairs and that will enable the hatch to open up. We can go upstairs and immediately interact with the lever as we get to the top to close the hatch. Job done. Oh, see? I told you this game is powerfully tense, even if you're not getting your ass bit. So, have a look at this console here, the uh, opposite corner or the opposite side. Now we're going to put in the code 2203. So 2203 for Lambda. Now what you have to do is put the lines basically uh, the intersecting point of the two lines until we get a signal. I don't think it's random but it should be in the sort of bottom more towards the bottom left hand corner ish. Um, so yeah that's where it should be. It, it will take a few seconds for the image to actually chill out so don't keep moving it around like I did. Obviously, the more clearer it gets, there we go. So we got there eventually. So that is definitely the uh, cheapier of the Assassin's hey, Creed symbols right there. there, isn't it? I found the dome ceiling. Oh, that's better. Simon, was it? Uh, Jared, Simon Jared. Hi, Simon. I'm Catherine. Have you figured out what's going on yet? Me? I was hoping you'd have some answers. I probably have some. What do you want to know? Where do you even begin? I mean, what is this place? How did I get here? And, and why do the robots talk like they're people? Well, you're at Epsilon, clearly. Have you never been there before? Where did you work? The Grimoire in Toronto. Is that really important? No, I mean, where did you work at Pathos 2? I don't know what that is. That's unexpected. Did you come directly from Toronto? Yeah, I did. And it was very unexpected. Have you seen any people? Like staff or field technicians? Only robots. Crazy ones. This is also strange. You're telling me. What was that? 
No! What's going on? I think this place is about to collapse. What do I do? Simon, come to Lambda. Uh, how do I get there? So welcome to the outside world. Incredibly, it turns out you're a fish. You're uh, South Park. You're from South Park. You are a fish, and Kanye West is after you. And well, everyone knows that episode. So anyway, what we can do then, as we try to run away from Kanye West, uh, especially now, dudes off his rocker. We are going to just climb up. Now, of course, if you're wondering what's going on, it will all be explained to you a little bit later on. But for now, we are heading into the ocean. Now, this can be. This is. This definitely. If you're sort of playing this on your own, it, it can take a while to see sort of where to go because this is in, this is a very very sort of dark. I mean, the whole game is dark, but especially outside, the paths may seem linear, but sometimes it's easy to just get lost. So um, now I'll show you exactly what I mean. Now, so we need to head to the right there. I'm heading to the left. Now, the the, the way that you can basically what you're trying to always look for is lights. So it's very easy, as I said. To get lost there as you can see i followed the light and immediately the light stopped so that's what i'm saying so back at the sort of beginning area we head to the right and the lights as i said are going to be your sort of pathway as it were so just keep heading um basically straight for the time being again it can be kind of easy to get lost though it's very very dark down here so just keep heading right sort of i mean it looks straight but there's little Jolts of left and right and all that jasmagonies. Lots of various checkpoints, though. So if you do get lost, you can just press the start button, go to exit and continue in, and you'll start at the uh, last checkpoint. So there we go. So keep heading straight. It should be okay this part for the time being, but especially with the next part that we're looking for, it can, it can get very easy to get lost, as I said. So just keep heading down. We are going to uh, whip out a friend. A, a robot friend, no, nothing else. From here, head left, of course. There we go. And we are going to be coming up to our whippy boy friend in just a moment. So just keep going. Again, if you're struggling, just have a look at the path on the floor. Uh, otherwise, you can see the sign just in front of us now, which should say Upsilon B. And that is exactly what we need, because just flashing underneath the rocks there, pull one of the rocks away. To grab the robot. Now, a lot, a lot of times in this game, you can either do things or... You, there's basically two ways of doing things. So, even if you don't get the robot, he'll still come to your rescue later on. So, this is what confused the crap out of me uh, for a bit. So, what you're going to do is basically keep hugging the left sort of big wall. So, head through the grass. Just keep heading... Sort of just keep heading left. Keep hugging the walls so you sort of know where you're going. Um, obviously, past this next light. Just keep heading left. And then what you're going to see directly in front of you is what we need, the shuttle station B. Um, now, again, I, I genuinely, it took me about 10 minutes of getting lost before I realized what the hell I was doing. So open up the way right there. And the, um, um we, oh, eventually, oh, we're going to get some help from our little robot pal. Again, if you didn't pick up the robot, you would have to do a, a small little puzzle to the right, um, which basically just opens up the door anyway. But it's just easier to get your robot friend to do it. So again, as I said, a lot of times in this game as well, what you're going to do is just look for the environment in terms of if you're going in the right direction and you're trying to follow me on screen, I'll obviously try and point out a few things. You know, big rock, chunky lamppost, big fish coming towards your face or something, just to let us know that we're both on the right path there. So interact with the Omni tool here on the right, again by pressing the right trigger, and that'll drain, that'll drain the water quicker than... <laughs> Your nuts getting drained after No Nut November. Actually, a lot slower than that, I suppose.
Let's hope the shuttle still work. How did I... Where did I get a flashlight? Again, near no panic, man. Near no bother. There is not, 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 not any monsters just yet. So head to the right here. Uh, down this sort of tube. Down the tube. And of course we're going to keep going straight. And then eventually we're going to find this little hole to our left. So uh, somehow I didn't think you'd be able to get in. But again, pr remember to press the B button there to crouch. If you need him to crouch. And then head on through. Again, incredible details of spookiness in the game going on. Which, <laughs> you know there's no monsters in it, but it still makes you crap your pants, which is great. So head into the left here, and again, just on the wall. Now you can speak to this lady here, but she's pooping her pants, so... Um, well, I guess there's only one thing to do here, and that is to pull out the WAUs. Remember what we've done um, in the, the Site Upsilon level? That's it, you've just got to pull them out, and... Are you okay? Fuck. Mate, she looks pretty darn deadness right now, so, uh... Well, lucky you're not a doctor, eh, Simon? Yep. Well... Goodbye! Sorry, we'll, we'll see you in the, in the next life, I suppose. Anyway, head back on yourself. Sorry, I didn't mean to actually kill anyone, it was just... It just sort of... Just sort of happened. Uh, head to the right, so we can obviously head straight back through again. Press the B button to crouch. And we're gonna head back through the... Creepy old cavern hole, as it were. Right, um, obviously there's only one way to go here, so it's back the opposite way, back through this bit. And now what you're going to do, this is again just a collectible. So I believe that they're just, just the collectibles in the game anyway. A uh, little bit of audio logs and things like that. Again, because they're not any needed for any achievements, that's why we're not going for it. We're just going straight through to the end of the game. So head to the opposite side. Open up the control panel, stick the power on, and ta da Yeah, nothing happens. Right, happy days. So interact with the door, that's obviously not going to happen. Oh, in fact, it, oh, it, it actually did work, sorry, it did work. So all you need to do is just head to the left, go towards the doors, the train doors here, and that will get you on. Pop your Omni tool back on. There we go. And now we are going to choose a little train station for us to go on. So, interact with all three of the white switches first. There we go. And then press the red button. So that will get us going. Going quicker than <laughs> every man after known at November. Okay, that's the last one I'll say now. So, interact with Lambda. Lambda, the one, the basically the third um, area right there. So, we're going to confirm the destination. We're on going to Lambda. Let's enjoy the next cutscene of life. Plenty of unskippable cutscenes and dialogue in this game, by the way. Welcome to Pathos 2, your expressway to the stars. What started as a thermal mining operation in the 60s has now become home to the Omega Space Gun, the world's most affordable way to launch satellites and deep space probes. Our unique Atlantic Ocean location allows for this gigantic coil gun, running longer than a marathon, to safely launch projectiles without risk of damaging the payload with risky combustion. The station is at multiple sites and has a diverse staff of engineers and scientists. Together they are able to produce, assemble, and launch the world's most sophisticated spacecrafts. In addition to our principal operation, Pathos 2 is also the home for multiple research projects within the marine sciences, including hydroculture, turbulence, and deep-sea construction. We are now leaving Upsilon for Lambda. Lambda is Pathos 2's shipping dock and transportation hub. There, you will be able to find shuttle trains leading to all the other parts of the station. And reports to the surface.
So as is the norm in video games, nothing ever goes smooth. You always end up crashing or you have to do something extra. To interact with the emergency exit here, the handle on the floor, make sure to grab your Omni tool. Because of course that always comes in handy, otherwise death is imminent. So what you're going to do is just keep heading straight until you see a little flashing sort of phone call ting on the right. And you're going to hear it as well. So there it is, flashing, ringing, you can't miss it. So interact with Big Kathy Kath Kath. Oh, how did you know? I was on my way, but then the shuttle train, it, it fucking crashed. Are you alright? The system says the section is sealed for a suspected hull breach. No, I'm not alright. What the hell happened in the world? Why are we underwater? Well, you're really out of place, aren't you? Look, don't worry about that right now. I realize you're confused, but you're so close to Lambda. If you just keep going. How close? Can I walk there? Yeah, but the tunnel is locked off to protect the overall structure from collapsing. What you need to find is your section's maintenance hatch. It'll lead outside. Maintenance hatch. No problem. What's going on out there? Catherine, you talk a lot, but girl, I, I guess to go, Simon. Uh, Kath. So, head to the left. You okay? Eventually. And what you're gonna see is this blinking red light just to the left of us there. So that is exactly where we're going into this little emergency exit hatch. That's what we're doing. And then what we're gonna do is crawl through here and then we're going to nip up the ladder and we're gonna swipe the Omni tool to head back outside into the dank, darpest, armpitty part of the ocean again. Very much like insert town here. Now it takes a while, but there is going to be a ladder that appears here, very uh, Spongebob and Sandy-ish. Uh, eventually, on the opposite side, it will appear. <laughs> So back out onto the ocean floor then. Now it's another case of, uh, we just need to follow the ocean path. So if we can follow the ocean path, again, try and follow the lights, follow the ocean path, and we are going to reach the Lambda site. Um, again, this one should be a little bit easier. Um, it's a little bit more linear than the other ones. So just, again, just keep heading sort of straight, or just keep following the path. If, if you get stuck, head over this pipe here. That's what I mean, little obstacles can, uh, trip you up sometimes head over the pipe and just keep going straight and then what we're actually going to see is lambdas the lambda site on the right but that's not the correct one um, and i'll show you exactly what i mean now because that one is just full of rocks there's going to be a robot here that obviously can attack you if you're in normal mode so just keep heading right now and there it is so there's the one lambda site but that is just full of rocks so you need just need, need to keep heading straight the robots, which do talk like humans, will try and follow you and try and kill you, of course, if you're on normal mode. So keep heading straight, and then eventually what we're going to see is, like, four little red lights. Just on the floor, there's a bunch of red lights there, and there they are. So it can take a while for it to come distance. When you see those lights, that's when you know you're on the right path. And to the right, there is the Lambda site. So that first time, that, that first Lambda sign did trick me up, i got to be honest. That did throw me for a loopy poopy. Um, but no, so you just got to keep going. Interact with your Omni tool, and then we are inside. Plus, we're going to get the Chasing Catherine achievement. So second achievement of the game. So this is where you're going to see your first real monster then. Now if you're playing on normal mode, what you would have to do is turn away from the monster. Do not look at it. Turn away from the monster until it despawns. But of course, since we're playing on safe mode, you can just literally walk straight into it. And then, um, yeah. So you can just walk straight into it. And then it'll despawn. But again, if you're playing on normal mode, just look away from it and then it'll eventually despawn. Um, but I'm going to run straight into him. Yeah. That is my running into things noise, by the way. Yeah. 
kind of like a sheep being strangled and fingered by a Welshman. Uh, but uh, I'm getting in there before all the English make the joke. So, so just uh, go ahead. There's Catherine. She's looking a bit worse for wear, to be honest. Uh, but speak to her for a minute or two. Can't take any more. This is everything's fucked. I give up. There's nothing left. Calm down. It's not the end of the world. You sure? It sure as hell looks like it. For all I know, there's no one left except for me. What do you mean? I'm right here. Don't take this the wrong way. But I meant any humans left except for me. Have you looked at yourself lately? You're a walking, talking diving suit with some electronics left on for good measure. I... I don't... You don't want to think about it? We'll start thinking about it. I... I, I don't want to do this anymore. I don't want to be this. I want out. Before you do anything hasty, could you help me with something? What? I was trying to find out what happened with my project when that brute knocked me to the ground. Your project? How could anything possibly matter when you know you're a stupid robot in a stupid dead world? Okay, focus. I need you to fix me so I can get back to work. Then you can sulk as much as you want. You've got to be kidding, right? I think I have a better chance of building myself a time machine than of putting you back together. I just need to access the computer. Oh, is that an Omnitool you're carrying? Oh, the door opener? I picked it up at Upsilon where I woke up. I don't have to do. Plug it into the terminal. Sure, whatever. When the Omnitool is loaded, just plug my Cortex chip into the tool. What's a Cortex chip? It will be obvious. Right, so then, like I said, obviously you can't, if you haven't noticed by now, but you can't actually interact with anything until all the conversation's over, and boy, these broskies do sure like a good talk. So, what we need to do, at the opposite end of the room that we're in, is we need to go ahead and plug the Omnitool in. Catherine is going to open up her backside, not her literal backside, that there's a spot on her back she's going to open up. Um, and then we're going to grab one of the chips. Mr. Muron. Mr. Moron, because you died first. Uh, just joking. Um, so, she's going to open up her backside for us. Again, you need to gonna, uh, take what's inside. There it is. So she opens up the back, let's grab the chip. Go back to the Omni tool and pop that in. Lively jabbly. Pretty much anything will fit. Oh, this feels weird. I'm in the Omnitool? Thanks. So, what's the project about? My project? Oh, well, I saved all the people on the station as brain scans and put them into an artificial world. We were going to launch it into space to save it from, uh, well, all of this. Are you telling me that you were going to launch a computer world filled with people into space? Yes. It was just a pet project at first, but it got really serious after the comet took out the surface. Then suddenly it became very important, and it was officially named the Ark. That's appropriate. How far did you get? I don't know. That version of me that I am. It came from a scan I did pretty early on. The living Catherine could very well have finished the project and launched it. I guess she could even still be alive. Huh. Weird thought. So the talking robots, are they also scans you did? They could be, but I doubt it. I'd expect much more sense if that was the case. Ah, all right, filing. What's happening? I managed to restore some data from the backup server. This should tell us everything we need. Oh. Could you do me a favor and run into the other room and have a look? I don't seem to be able to view the files in this condition. I need to know that the Ark is safe. Sure, Kath. So, for now, of course, don't worry about the monster respawning. He is despawned to death. He's about a... Good spawn as a pastor spawn. So, what we're going to do, come outside here. We're going to turn to the right. And then what we're going to see is a sort of room on its own. Uh, on the right here. So, go inside. This little room. And then we've got like a kind of a little puzzle to do. Now, in terms of this being an action adventure game, there is a lot of uh, sort of small puzzles and stuff to do. Which is, um, you can get quite tricky if you don't realise what you're doing. So, open up the arc tracker, which is on the bottom first. Um, go down to Earth. Now, not the... You've got to actually interact with the Earth... The the Earth itself, rather than the um, noise. The bloody noise. The actual word. <laughs> the noise. Okay. So, interact with the Earth there, and that's all good. Now, what we're going to do is... You're going to interact with the square, which apparently is the Spanish and Western Africa one, which is basically the third row and fourth square over. There it is. 
So third row, four square over, interact with that. Apparently that's Spain and Western Africa. You wouldn't be able to tell that though, could you? And then that's going to drop it in. The Tau square, which is on the very right hand side of the third row. And then with the next one, it's going to be the square, basically the top of the room layout. So the very, very top square, the top left hand corner. There it is. That is where Mr. Arkbags is just chilling, killing, smoking some bird. Right. So we've got what we need, or we've got the location of what we need anyway. And I bet Simon's still a little bit confused, isn't he? Literally 40 minutes ago, he was just going in for a brain scan, and now he's looking for something which is under the ocean, which is all just going a bit nuts. So we can press the B button to back out. We don't have to listen to Catherine all the way here. Uh, head back to the left. We are going to head to the uh, same room that uh, Catherine was just in. Pick up your Omni tool, of course, eventually. I'll take us there. I can move, jump, swim, sort of. You're stuck in the door open, the Omni tool. I'll just carry you there and you'll show me what to do. That sounds really risky. Besides, I don't like the idea of you carrying me around. Come on, Catherine. This is what you wanted to do, your final mission. Let's launch the Ark. We would need to find a way to get into the Abyss. Can't date the Climber without a power suit. We probably have to go to Theta and pray the Dumbat's still working. Okay, so we go to Theta. I don't know, it's pretty far. Catherine, look around. What else is there to do? Maybe there's still a working shuttle train that could take us to Theta. I doubt it. Just have a look around. Push comes to shove, I'll walk there. Okay then, I'll just eject from this thing. Don't forget to take me with you. I won't forget. Can I pull the Omni tool out? Wait, wait, wait. Okay, just be sure to plug me in again at some point. You got it. So eventually the guy that's simping for a robot will um, pick up his Omni tool. We're gonna stop talking. Mr. Simp, Simpson. Simon Jarrett's the Simpson. Right, anyway, we're gonna head back to the opposite end and we're going to whap open our Omni tool, get the water going, SpongeBob style, and head back out into the bikini bottom. So when the door opens up then, what we're doing is going literally straight ahead because there is a submarine literally dead on straight ahead. You can see the lights coming off it. So that is what we're going to be heading for. You're going to need to open that up again manually by pressing up on the left stick. There we go. Watch out for your big nugget right there. Uh, interact again. Put your Omni tool onto the machine. Huh? What? What is this? Curie Emergency Vessel 4. Hey, Simon, can you hear me? I hear you. Can you get this thing running? Hang on, I'll give it a try. Sorry, it's dead. Worth a shot? The CV came from Curie. It was a ship that used to make runs between Lambda and Lisbon. Looks like their wreck is close. Maybe you can find a vessel like this one inside. Sounds like a plan. I'll just save the security information and update the Omni tool. There. Should help you get around. Great. And right, let's head out and go to the left of the submarine now. So again, this is obviously going to be very dark, so I'll try and tell, tell you where to go best I can. I'll head past this little bit of light. And what you're going to do is, uh, you can see already the sort of bunch of red lights here on the floor. So we're just going to be following that. And eventually we're going to walk up a hill and enter a door with a red light above it. That comes in handy. So there we go. Turn to the... Turn to the um, oh, <laughs> you can just ignore that. No, we're going straight. Sorry, I just thought there was something on the left of us there. Crap in my pants. Uh, so we head straight... Obviously, we should just be in between two rocks by now. Turn to the right, and you can see the red door right there, or the red, or the light, the red light above the door. Now, obviously, every time that you see the the, the um, screen start sort of jittering like that, as it were, uh, you're not losing performance, so don't worry about that, you uh, 60 FPS kings. Interact with the door here on the left. That basically just means an enemy is nearby, which, of course, if you're playing on safe mode, is fine. If you're playing on normal mode, time to crap him, buddy. So, head up the ladder, turn to the left, 
and then at the end of this little walkway, turn to the right. You might have to crouch here, so, you know, get your crouching ability powers on. That'll come in handy. Uh, head down to the other end. Basically, we're just going through the ship. Sometimes you can get stuck on absolutely nothing, which, of course, is just excellent. Uh, as is normal life, to be honest. When you, It's like when you trip over absolutely nothing, and then you look at the floor all pissed off. Because <laughs> it's your fault. going to punch you in the face, no floor. Yeah. Right, we're going to head out of the hole. There we go, that's nice. And then you can just keep sort of basically going sort of straight. Turn to the right, go straight. Again, lots of angry things. There comes Mr. Monster. Scary stuff, man. Straight, straight, straight. And then eventually, we are going to head to what I believe is going to be the right. So, as you can see, there's like a ladder on our left. So, and a bunch of things on our left right there. As long as you can see them, you're in the right direction. Sort of head, again, keep going straight. Because you're going to see this big rock and like a big piece of billboard, that looks like. Or a piece of ship, that probably is more likely. Uh, so, head to the left of where that big billboard ship was. And we're basically going inside this big giant structure into the hole. Very, very difficult to see that one. Um, but again, as long as you are following, uh, you know, as long as you are going past these sort of big ship piece with the ladder sticking out of it, you are going in the right direction. But again, can be kind of tricky to get that, um, just to see in the ocean. Why can't they put some lampposts down there, bro? Where's the big fish with the big lights on the head helping me? Anyway, head up. Uh, we're going to go through this door after heading up these stairs just once. Now, this bit can be kind of confusing because uh, there's just a lot of doors to go through. And there is a monster in the area as well. Uh, but for now, all we're doing is just heading to the left and all the way up the stairs, heading in through the door. There she blows, matey, the Flying Dutchman ship. Right, so, head to the left, when we get exit through the door anyway. And then interact with and go through this next door. Plenty of escape vessels, yes. Go through to the next door. Eventually, uh, you, you know, apparently you got a gut on you or something. Head, um, well, head right through this next door. And go to the right through this next door again. Turn, well, actually, no, we are going to go right, sorry. Down to the F-13. So apologies, I just, it's because I crapped my pants there with Chunky Monkey right there. So head down this hallway where the monster was. Turn right at F-1.2. Go through this next doorway on the left. And here is the next escape vessel. I say the next one, it's the only one. So you're going to have to rotate it like you would normally uh, in the, on the right stick. Ladder's going to pop down. That'll do him. <laughs> like, man, this game, like you said, you know you can't get hurt. But... Every little thing is so atmospherically tense. And that is what a good game is. That is what a very good game is. Still makes you crappy pants even though you know you can't die. So head through all the floaty, weird objects. To the left into this next door. Go to the right and then left here. Just keep heading straight. Don't go to the right. Keep heading straight. And then on this last doorway on the left. There we go. So head through here. A couple of uh, gentle wars there. Just chilling and some seashells. There is the monster here again, so what you're going to do then is, um, well, we're just going to go straight through him. Of course, remember, if you're playing on normal mode, you would look away until he despawns, but go through, head to the right, up the steps, obviously to the left, up some more steps. Oh man, this is scary. Uh, turn to the right, <laughs> anyway, go to the right again, and we're going to go through this closed door. There we go. Head, uh, well, what we're going to do now is head up the stairs to the left. And obviously to the right. To the left into this doorway. And we need to, it's basically going to be a big chase scene we need to run away from. So, interact with all three plugs. Get them out of the WAUs. Or the, wow. Owen Wilson style, wow. So, uh, after you unplug all three, little cutting's going to have to, uh, going to happen. And then we're going to... Run away from big stranger things looking thing. Warning. Wide load. Reversing. Right. Quickly. Run for it then. So head to the left. Immediately go to the right to go back down the stairs. To the left. And you're going to go through the open doorway. Now some of them may look closed but they're not. So go all the way left. To the left again. Down the stairs. So immediately left. To the right of course. To the right again. So go back down these steps. 
to the right, and obviously to this uh, doorway on the left. Head to the right. And just keep going to the right again. There's going to be the open doorway. Go left. Yeah, keep going. Go left. And we've made it back. There we go. You've got to put your Omni tool on, though. So make sure to put your Omni tool, which is going to be on the left-hand side. Put it down. You're going to open, close the door. And the, um, well, your brown pants are safe for another couple of minutes or so. <laughs> yes, yes. I just need to pump the water out and get a trajectory in place. Hurry up. Steer this thing? Starboard rotor is choking, but I can compensate. How do you even know what direction we're going in? Don't worry, I'm locked up to the navigator. We're headed for Theta. Should be a matter of minutes. I thought I was done for back there. Seems like the WoW is keeping the Curie from going into a catastrophic failure state. I, I mean, how did it get on the ship? Are you talking about the black tentacles in the engine room? I've seen them before at Upsilon. What are they? They're a manifestation of a malfunctioning station-wide artificial intelligence called the WoW. Station-wide? So we just made a powerful enemy. No, no, it's not like that. The AI isn't a persona. It doesn't feel or think like we do. It's more like, uh, it's more like a cancer. Was that the ship? Looks like your sabotage worked better than expected. Bridge, fire back! Hold on, the blast just pushed us all the plateau! What does that mean? If I don't hit Delta, we're dead. Ah, so we are once again after the crash or whatever the hell just happened. We're going to head back outside And again, we are just trying to run away from Kanye West because I mean Kanye West might be a gay fish gay fish But uh, you know that's a, that's up to him um, So when we are able to move what we're gonna do is move directly in front of us to put the Omni tool down Eventually, I mean it may take a little while for him to come around yeah, oh, bruh. All, all you did was crash ever so slightly. C come in. C come in. There we go. So I think we're going to make it. There we go. Right. So we're going to do then straight in front of you as you begin. Uh, the Omni tool is going to be put down. So you're going to have to place that down. And then if you look up. Oh, we'll just try that again, shall we? There we go. So pop the Omni tool down. And then if you look up, there is the escape hatch. Literally just above. Literally just above you. And then your little robot friend will come and save the day. Again, even if you didn't pick up the robot friend, he will come and help you anyway. That's a, that's a nice uh, robot. Just the way Mama used to make it. So this is more of a chilled level, no monsters in this bit, so what we're going to do is head directly in front of us then, uh, struggling to get over a rock apparently, go on to, there we go, obviously get the another achievement right there, so what we're going to do is just uh, basically keeping following the lights, so what we're doing is looking for a uh, comm antenna, so just basically keep going straight, uh, go on to these train tracks right here, and then eventually we will come up to it on our left hand side. So follow the tracks. Follow the leader, leader, leader. Then go to the left. Off to the left. And then keep left. There we go. So you can already see where the comm antenna is. Right. Again, a little bit of a puzzle. So on the channel on the bottom right hand corner, you're going to need to turn that to number five. So put the channel to number five first. And then what you're going to do with the corresponding arrows on the left hand side, you need to get the blue, um, blue... Yeah, uh, what that? What, what is that? The the blue display thing over onto the yellow line. Okay, so the blue scanner. Sorry, that's what we're after. So using any of the arrows, just put the blue scanner over to the yellow line. Again, make sure the channel's on number five. Put the blue scanner on the yellow line. When it's on the yellow line, uh, you can just press the B button to exit. You don't have to do anything else. So that's all good. 
Uh, but again, make sure that blue scanner is on the yellow line as you exit. So that'll get you the 049 link established number. So what you're going to do then from here, you're going to basically turn directly back on yourself because we're looking for another little screeny monitor. There it is. So if we head just to the left and then left again, that is where the monitor is going to be. And again, a couple of things that we have to press here. So let's turn it on. Now what we're going to do is uh, we need to select Zeppelins. So choose Zeppelins and then Zeppelin 049, which should be the top one. You can choose Echo, which I think that's just a collectible. I think that's just a collectible again. The Echo, I believe. Um, anyway, then you need to choose Request Transport. Now, it's going to take a couple of minutes to appear, but basically, when you back out of the screen here, the Zeppelin is going to go just to the left of the screen. So if you literally went left of the screen, that's where the Zeppelin's going to land. Um, but it's going to take a few minutes anyway. So there we go, we just head back, and there it is. So just to the left then, that is where the Zeppelin's going to land. Like I said, it takes a few minutes anyway, so that's why I didn't edit that part out. Um, so eventually it'll drop down, there we go. So again, this is very cutscene-y. A little bit of gameplay is going to happen, and then it is very cutscene-y. So pop your Omni tool down. Gah! Gah yourself, big gah. Popping in and out of existence like that. Where are we now? Delta. At least that's what you said before the crash. Oh, right. Of course. Is this a Zeppelin? Appropriately named. You think it can get us to Theta? It's a cargo transport. They use them for moving materials between the sites, anything that's too big for the shuttles. I'm sure it can carry us. Ugh, why won't it work? Come on. Oh, the tool chip is bust. Isn't that part of the Omni tool? Look who's been paying attention. I have to deal with that back at Upsilon. Then you know how it works. We need to get a new tool chip and switch it. Care to point me in the direction of the closest tool chip storage? I think it would be easier to just take one from a robot. What? Just knock a robot over the head and steal their chips? The toolbox over there says it has a stun baton. You could use that. Come on. I don't want to hurt anyone. Isn't this a bit much? It's just a robot, Simon. We're just robots. Sort of. I'll get us a chip. So, let's go get a chip. So, look at the box to the left of you right there. Uh, no, there's nothing up there. Uh, interact with the button or click the button and we've got a little stun baton stun baton Right, so what we're gonna do is find one of two of the red angry robots floating around and normally they're just gonna be on the sort of outskirts um, Of the little area for some reason they're not actually floating inside which is it comes in handy again if you're playing on normal mode So head to the left past, past the screen and you should be able to see one or two sort of floating about there we go, so there's one directly sort of just outside of the box for me here. Now what you need to do is just get right underneath it, press the right trigger when the aim reticle gets a lot bigger, like now. And you need to do this three times until you can reach inside of him. So there's the chip then, right on his rear end, his rear admiral. Uh, for some reason, I'm having incredible trouble trying to pick open a chip because I'm trying to close his door for some reason. What am I doing? There we go. So we get the chip. Right, all you need to do is just head back to the Zeppelin. And it should, remember, it's just to the left of the screen, the monitor screen right there. Put that into the Omni tool. And, uh, well, you're pretty much, <laughs> you're pretty much squared away. All you got to do then after doing that is flip the lever on the right. Press the yellow button below it, and another cutscene for a few minutes is going to appear. Don't be mad, okay? We really needed that chip. We'd, we'd be stuck here. Could you do it? Kill a robot like that? I get attached to them too. I'm not a monster. But in this case, it had to be done. He was... talking. 
I mean, he was delusional, but he seemed sincere. Present. Yeah, well, I'm sure it's fine. Was he really that different from us? It's just beginning to sink in. I mean, really sink in. I'm a robot. Didn't we cover this already? I guess I've known ever since I woke up at Upsilon. I just keep suppressing it. Like my brain doesn't want me to think about it. It's really getting hard not to think about it. Yeah. Could you maybe hit that switch over there so we could get moving? Oh, yeah, sure. really good back there, Simon. We got a slight delta detour, but we're back on track. Yeah. We should touch down on a cargo platform just outside Theta. Then we just head inside, grab the duck back, and head down the abyss. 4,000 meters. That's a long way. We don't have to worry, though, because with the duck back, the Ark could have been in the Mariana Trench. It'll hold for anything. That's great. And then... We can start listening to other people when they talk, because that's how conversations work. What? Oh, sorry. I, I just can't stop thinking about what we've become. It's clear that we're no longer human. But then how can I feel like Simon? How can I feel like anything at all? I mean, technically, I don't have any ears, no mouth. Christ, that's a weird thing to think about. I mean, I'm making sounds. I'm still saying things. You sure are. <sighs> okay. Your new body most likely has senses similar to those you had as a human. And your mind, only knowing one way to perceive the world, superimposes that skill set on top of your new features. So my mind is covering it up, pretending nothing's different. If it didn't, you'd probably be incapable of interacting with the world at all. And the stress would either kill you or make you go insane. So I've found a good balance between awareness and ignorance. Does that mean I shouldn't think about this stuff, or are my thoughts actually making me cope? Could I tip the balance by suddenly gaining some insight and then go insane? I wouldn't worry about it. I mean, we have real things to deal with. Saving mankind, remember? Speaking of which, we're closing in on Theta. I'll eject the Omnitool. As always, don't forget to take me with you. Uh, Kath, before you go, the artificial intelligence you mentioned in the escape vessel? Uh-huh, yeah, the warden unit, the WoW. Is it the WoW's fault that we're like this? I mean, it seems like something an unreliable AI would do. I suppose it set the ball in motion, but it's not directed with purpose. <laughs> it's really complicated to explain how machines think, Simon. Concentrate on getting inside data, okay? See you soon. So after a, what seemed like a long cutscene, but a lot of fantastic little story stuff going on. Um, really. Uh, grab the Omni tool then, and then what you're going to do is um, basically head straight from here. So, it, I mean, it's sort of hard to tell exactly which way you were going, but if you've seen the big pipe on the right, head to the left of it. You can see the train track. That's what we're aiming for. That's what we're going for. Yes, the train track of life. Right, so what we're going to do then, uh, we can't actually get into the open big chunky door here, so we're going to interact with the hatch just to the right of it. We're going to rotate the circular switch clockwise, which of course if you're unsure of clockwise and anti-clockwise, clockwise is of course to the right. So press the right trigger and then uh, push it to the right. You're going to do that a couple of times. There you go, so you're going to do that just a few times, Pull. so then we can pull it out. Then we're going to rotate it anti-clockwise, so go the other way. 
So to the left. And then push it back in again. Now, uh, don't do what I've done here. You've got to actually push it all the way back in. In case you're wondering why it's not working. Push it all the way back in. That makes... Funnily enough, that makes more of the sense, doesn't it? That makes all the sense. Then you can interact with the lever. And then we can head inside, swipe the Omni tool, and drain the water. No, not November Star, boys. <laughs> Okay, so let's do some smashing, some grabbing. Right, when we head inside, have a look to the left. You're going to see a little cheeky fire extinguisher. In case of any fires underwater. That is very, uh, makes sense. Head to the right and we are going to smash the window. Remember, the left bumper to throw. If you can, uh, apparently I, my eyes are one end of the spectrum and one end of the other. <laughs> so I missed about two or three times then. So head inside and eventually, of course, we're going to use and have... After we put our Omni tool down, we're going to have another little conversation with our dear simping partner, Kathraring. Okay, great. Time to hijack ourselves a submarine. There will be nothing stopping us when we have the done that. You guys sure have a lot of machines and vehicles down here. What makes this one so special? It's the only transport that can go into the abyss without cracking like a can of soup. If this is one of a kind, then how did they get the art down the abyss in the first place? <laughs> That's a good question. I suppose they did it the hard way and just walked. Didn't realize that was an option. Kath, what's it like inside the Ark? Is it like a movie or virtual reality? No, of course not. It's, you know, like real life, but slightly better. Pleasant temperature, clean air, good weather. So people in the Ark just walk around pretending it's the real world? You don't have to pretend. It's perfectly immersive. And it can just sustain itself? Yes. Attached to a pro, fueled by solar panels, it could survive for thousands of years. That's amazing. Just thinking about the Earth being what it is, and us setting out to save the final remains of humanity, it's... It's... Heroic? Uh, at least it feels worth doing. Here we go. The Dunbat! Ah, oh, damn it. I knew it was too good to be true. What's wrong? It's... It's quarantined. Hold on. We need a security cipher. How bad is it? It's we don't write these things <coughs> down type of bad. Maybe someone's still around who can tell us what it is. Hmm. Sure, let's go with that. I'll just unlock the other doors for you so you can explore the stage. Come on, mate, we've got to rest the achievements to grab by your lab. Bloody hell. This was supposed to be out by Halloween. Jesus Christ. Anyway, go to the left, interact with the door. We're all open now. Here to the left, we're going to go down this ramp, straight in front of us, going up the other one. And what you're going to do, we're going to open up this door, but not go through it just yet. So, open it up, it's all good. That just saves literally one second later on. Go down to the next door, open it up. There is going to be a monster in here. Now, what we need to do is basically, it's very dark, but we basically need to head to the sort of right-hand side of the screen where we're going to find a monitor um, to interact with. But remember, there is a monitor in here, uh, a monster in here. So again, if you're playing on normal mode and the screen starts fizzing up, just run away and hide until he baggers off. So head straight. And this is where it is then. So the monitor that we're looking for, as I said, is on the right-hand side. Um, again, this is one of those that can just get very easy to get lost. So go straight. There's the monster. Crap. Crap him. Crap him. Okay, run away. 
So just keep heading straight, and as I said, it, it, I do end up getting quite kind of lost right here. So I do apologize about this, but it is uh, on the sort of right hand side of this area. So there we go, there it is. So again, I do apologize, it's a bit of a pain in the butt, that section, to be honest. So what we need to do then is press the button, interact with the, the, the first button first, and then interact, well, you can interact with the screen if you want, but all you're doing is literally standing by. Again, if you're on normal mode, and you see the monster come in, you can obviously just go and hide in the darkness until he pisses it. Otherwise, we're just going to chill, and chill we are going to do. So I believe this screen was on the sort of more right-hand side of this room. Kind of hard to tell when it's pitch bloody black, mate. So before you leave, make sure to flick the switch up. You get 45 seconds or so to do that, so make sure to flick the switch up. And of course, remember to press the Y button to toggle your flashlight as well, if you so desire. So uh, we're going to head basically straight and sort of left now. We're basically just heading back towards the exit, um, which there should be just like little bits of lights. Um, it's sort of, it's, it is difficult to tell, but there we go. So we're out of that. That's just how you do that section then. So remember, you have to flick up the switch before leaving. Just remember to do that. You have 45 seconds to do that. As long as you've done that, we're all good. Now we can just climb back up. And, uh, well, that's all good. So, heading up, heading up, heading up. Heading up, heading up, heading up. And finally back into the safe zone. So what we're going to do now is head through the right door this time. And it's kind of like a little bit of a puzzle maze type thing. So, again, don't worry, no monsters in this bit, which is all nice. From here, though, when we get to this first part, what we're going to do is take a right and head all the way up to the next room. A bit of an edit there because somehow I managed to get stuck. So you can very much easily get stuck. Uh, interact with the thing on the door first to drop that down. It <laughs> handles like crap, but there we go. Heading through the right-hand side door. Uh, it's more of a puzzle sort of area section now. So what you need to do then, I think... I believe this part's randomized, so what you need to do is we need one clean chip uh, amongst a bunch of 100 crappy chips. Which, uh, again, Britain versus America, chips chips are, fr chips are chips, and chips in America are crisps. But for some reason Americans call them chips. Anyway, the argument goes on and it always will. So again, like I said, have a look through each one. Um, press all the arrows until you get to the other side. If there are no clean chips in this one, then there should be one on the right hand side. Now, again, I'm not sure if it's random because the two times, the couple of times I played through this section, it always ended up in this part for me anyway. So there is the uh, clean key, lucky chip, whatever it is. Go in the next room, interact with the computer, put the chip down. And again, we've got just a couple of things to do here. So, what you're going to be doing first is you're going to be looking for the third one, which is Brandon 1. Oh, what did he win? Nothing? Okay, cool. No, Brandon 1. Uh, upload that, and then what we're going to do is you can select any environment, and then we're going to select run, but we're going to fail anyway. It doesn't matter what we pick, we are going to fail um, if you do that. Uh, apparently, I just went straight on. To the right, have a look at the simulation assets here. Pick that one up, and then go through into the next room, which is opposite. Um, go into the, uh, put the simulation asset down or the chip in the next bit, and then put the slot one chip down. Loading external device. And then what you need to do is go down to scan room and then copy to chip. So scan room and then copy and chip. That'll copy the data to the chip. Of course, as you can just see. And then pick up the chip again. Chip, 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 chip. Vern, 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 vern. Right, now we can head right. So back into the long ass open hallway. And from here, we're going to go to the right again and into the next room. Again, press the white button to put your flashlight on if you're a skirt of the dirt. Uh, just like so. So go to the right. And on the second door, which will be 03, is Brandon 1. Brandon 1, Welsh Hunter 0. Uh, I'm so sorry, by the way. I'm, I'm such a douchebag. Right, interact with the computer screen. You can actually turn on the uh, Brandon's light if you so wish. What we're going to do, though, is interact with August 25th, 2103. So that is just for a little bit of um, story progression right there. We could try to make him think that she's there during the Let us stop talking. Ah, we go, mate. Right. So again, that's where the light is if you wanted some more light. Um, other than that, 
there is just the one data buffer collectible thing available here. Um, but that's not actually uh, relevant if you didn't want to press that, that's fine. So, from here we're going to head back to the right. And eventually, there we go. So, head to the left. From here we're going to head to the left again. And head go, head go. We're going to go head back into the uh, room, so to the right this time. And interact with the computer again. Now this time what we're going to pick is... You're going to choose um, Alice, and then we're going to choose Run. So choose Alice, choose Run. Oh, in fact, actually, we need to put the chip in first. <laughs> what a dumbass. Right, so put, put the chip in first, and then... <laughs> I'm so sorry. So we need to choose Scan Room, and then Alice. I was wondering what was happening then, so apologies about that. So we need to choose Scan Room, and Alice, and then choose Run. That'll get this little cutscene going. So, uh, apologies about that. Apparently, I am an admiral douchebag today. Well, that's what you get for listening to his stories. I guess I had it coming. About Strohmeyer. He's sending me to the new site for ASAP. <coughs> what should I tell him? It's all right. I can talk to him. Wait. Didn't Sean just tell you to take it easy? Don't worry, I'm not going to tell anyone. I do feel hungover. Okay, it's 1729 over 42, 12 over 407. So, there we go then. Uh, you don't actually have to um, wait for anything. The, uh, basically, Brandon's going to die. Okay, that's, uh, that's pretty much what it is. So, that's all that is. So, head out of the room to the left again. And uh, we're actually coming up to the end of this level now. This seems like it has gone on forever, hasn't it? So, head back to the left, head all the way down. Couldn't we just have extracted the cipher from Brandon's data somehow? It's so cruel bringing him back like we did. No, that's there you So, uh, let's save a couple of seconds here. So while Catherine is still going on, what we're going to do is grab this chair. Now, after all this bit, what you're supposed to do is uh, just head to the left and go all the way around. Um, but if you want to save a couple of seconds, which... Uh, to be honest, I don't think it's actually going to do. You can pop the chair over here onto the right. You can jump on. And just jump over the fence. Um, if you can get it first time, that will save you a good couple of seconds. If you're anything like me and you were Admiral Stupidity, um, and it took you more than enough attempt to try and jump over the chair, then you probably saved yourself. You probably cost yourself about 30 seconds. So, anyway, after she's talking, grab the Omni tool, head out. Now, what you're supposed to do, of course, is head to the left and go around. Um, what I ended up doing here was trying to jump over the chair and trying to do it smooth as hell. And jump over to the fence first time. And as you can see how well this has gone for me. I probably just cost myself some seconds. So, uh, so <laughs> yay, good job me. So, open up the way then. Now what you're going to do is basically you're going to see an unplugged machine. Directly in front of us. So what you're going to need to do is obviously plug it, plug it in. So pick it up there with the right trigger. Hold the right trigger. Come on. Come in. There we go. Right, so onto the machine now, all you got to do is, there we go, click the left button, or click the red button, sorry, and then just move all the little, little tiny little knobs all the way over to the right. Cutscene's going to, uh, cutscene's going to happen. What we're going to do is head directly in front of us over to the set of ladders, but we are going to die of sorts, of sorts. <laughs> No, ach, ne, nach, noch, nach. That's no worries. That's supposed to happen. Um, that was my Scottish there for no worries. Nach, ne, 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 ne. I'm so sorry, Scotland. Please don't hate me. Right, so anyway, that is supposed to happen anyway. So what you're supposed to do is actually grab these stairs now and just put them directly in front of you. Uh, so we can actually obviously climb up. You are going to get the plan B achievement. That won't unlock until halfway until climbing through this next little section. 
So, you know, you don't have to be perfect. Uh, for some reason, now you just need me to be absolutely perfect. So open up the door, press the B button to crouch, and for the next couple of minutes, make your way through. Ah, oh, it feels so good to be out of there. Right, interact the Omni tool down for, of course, more Simpsons dialogue. Simpin dialogue. No, Wow got to the Dunbat before we did, am I right? Well, it was talking. That's rarely a good sign. Damn it. The Dunbat was our best shot. I was really banking on this to work. Come on, we can't quit now. There's gotta be another way. How do you think you did it? How did the team get the Ark down the Abyss in the first place? If they didn't use the Dunbat, the only other way would be the Climber at Omicron. It's like an elevator which supposedly reaches all the way down into the Abyss. Okay, so we do that. We go to Omicron and take the elevator. Yeah, okay. Sure. We'll just head over to Omicron and hope there's a power <laughs> suit that fits you. You know, so you don't implode while in the Abyss. <laughs> that does sound useful. Alright, let's go then. Wait, what is this place? Seems to be a lot of information on the art here. There's a prototype and everything. Okay. Let's start it up. I want to see how it works. Maybe we can figure out how to get on the arc. Right, so a bit of a... It's not a weird puzzle, but if we interact with and put the plug in right there... Uh, we're into the Theta Labs now, by the way, in case you were wondering. What you need to do is interact with the computer, and you have to put um, these specific... Um, uh, systems highlighted in orange, okay? So, um, so basically just copy what I do here. So what you need to highlight in orange is on the left hand side, the first, the third, fourth, fifth, sixth, eighth, and tenth one. So that's um, rigid, fluid, buddy, or whatever that is, atmos, scan, dim light, and adv. And then on the right hand side in the objects, the first one highlighted in orange, the fifth one, and the eleventh one. So on the right hand side, it's going to be Somaham, Mod River, and Moon Full. So the ones that you should have highlighted in orange altogether are Cis Physics Rigid, Physics Fluid, Fizz Boy, W Mod Atmo, Interface Scan, W Mod Din Light, Gen Veg Adv, Soma Hume, Mod River, and Moon Full. This is exactly what it should look like, and that is how you complete that little tiny puzzle there. Then you should be able to have enough memory. Turn a uh, switch next on. And job done. Right. Now what we have to do then is select dummy, which is at the very bottom. Upload. There we go. And then we're going to start the simulation. Now what you have to do, on the resource allocation there on the right hand side, after we click start simulation, put the resource allocation down to 3%. Now when the loaded module at the top there says dummy, that is when you're supposed to pause the simulation. So. Highlight pause simulation, and then when it says dummy on the loaded module, then you need to pause the simulation. So right about now. There we go. So that is what it's supposed to look like right there. Then you can go ahead and run the diagnostics. Good running, buddy. Yes, of course. I wouldn't run diagnostics. I'd be knackered, to be honest. Too much running for me, that one. Um, right, so we, now we can actually back out. Have a look directly behind you, and you're going to see this um, NMRI machine. It's got a nuclear icon on the door right there. So, again, this just plays out as a cutscene. So, open it up and enjoy the next couple of minutes. Again. What's this thing? That's just a compound examiner. Coster uses it to investigate structural integrity in payload frameworks. Of course. Could you fit inside it? 
If I knew what you were made of, it would be a hell of a lot easier to figure out how to get you on the Ark. Bit of a tight fit. Can you reach the on switch? Should I be worried about radiation? I think we're beyond that. Interesting. You seem to be one with the diving suit you're wearing. Everything's meshed together. How's that gonna work with the suit we're picking up at Omicron? Um, I think they're bigger. You should be able to wear them both. Imogen? Who's that? It looks like the basis for your body is one of my old colleagues. A standard cortex chip for robots, including the data reader and the ocu torch, has just been forced through the skull. What? Structure gel has fused the whole construction together. Amazing stuff. No, 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 hold on, back up. I'm one of your old colleagues? Well, your body is. Imogen Reed. That's disgusting. Hey, don't say that. She was my... She was nice to me. Anyway, the Cortex chip is good news. That means we can transfer your mind to the Ark with a pilot seat. Kath, I'm half a dead person. Yes, it makes sense. Think about it. All those simplistic minds we've run into? Just reviving a dead person doesn't seem to work that well. A robot body seems to make people a bit unreliable. You are the best of both worlds. A sound mind and a sound body. Lovingly jammingly. There we go. So that thing just happened. Right. Let's go get our new suit, huh? Right, so into the, in the next area is going to be a monster again that you're going to need to find. So head to the left, pick up your Omicron, or uh, Omnitool, Omicron, your Omnitool, and head out. Now, like I said, in this next area, it's just going to be one monster. As I said, safe mode, we don't care. But again, normal mode, every time it gets clearer, turn off your flashlight, hide in the darkness for a bit, don't make any noise, and, well, you should know the drill by now if you're playing on normal. So what we're going to do then... Uh, what you can do is head to the right, pick up a wet floor sign, and smash the window. But we're going to head to the left. Uh, go straight here. You can already hear the monster. Creepy ass ting. Go into this room, which is basically the office room. Pick up a chair. And then... oh, it, it, Come on, chair. Apparently, I can't pick up chairs now. Well, aren't I just good? So from here, head left. Uh, basically straight. So tight, slightly bit left. Then head left here, go to the right, to the um, left, no, sorry, it was to the left, I, I was right the first time, sorry, so to the left, and here is the window, so you can just smash that open with the chair the first time, like I said, there's a wet floor sign just there, which you can use, but for some reason, I literally had so much trouble opening up the window, so that's why I just grabbed the chair, I thought it would be a bit quicker. So, go ahead, go on to uh, this dead guy. This is Seaman's brother, Spermy. Um, <laughs> go and grab his little chair, his little keycard thing. Head straight. Go to the left. Through this doorway, go to the right. And here we are back in the office. So, this is, of course, where the, um, <laughs> the monster starts getting a bit nuts. Put your chip in. And then interact with the uh, computer screen, of course. Load the connector chip. Go to um, key control and then update connector chip. And there we go. So that's all good. Now we can back out. Remember to pick up the chip on the way out as well. I forgot it the first time, which pissed me off. So pick that up. The monster is going to be right here, directly in our way. So obviously you'd have to go a different way. But for now, we're just going to go straight. Go to the left and then immediately left again. Interact with this. Put the chip in here. And then what you need to do then is close the two sort of uh, things down, the two locks, if you will. That opens that up. Uh, interact with the key code. Interact with the actual code or the, the keypad itself. Close it and interact with it. That's what I'm trying to say. And then what you need to do is press the second option, which is maintenance. So as soon as you press maintenance, that's how you do that particular section. Job done. <laughs>
So when this spooky next bit happens, of course, you're going to interact with the hatch. Oh, man. By the way, they made these monsters look <laughs> just as good as my absolute nipples. Disgusting. Actually, my nips are quite tiny, so they made them nothing like it. Um, but the monsters are damn hideous in this game. Now, that is a sign of a good horror game, right? So after basically cracking and breaking your back, all good. Now we're into the theta, theta maintenance. Now, um, this, of course, there's going to be lots of presence there of uh, the monster in this area. But what you need to do then is basically head to the left, head through the door as we begin. And head straight through, try and go up the door for a little scary jump scare. Boo! <laughs> you crap them. Ashley, man, what the hell you doing? I got the dog licking me bottles, Ali G style. Get the hell out. Sorry, it was just a cutscene. No, <laughs> just a dream. Daydreaming myself there. So, head basically straight, and we're going to head down to this next door. So, open it up. A lot of going through a bunch of doors while we try and run away from the monster. Head through the next door, of course. This is just a case of running like hell. Turn to the left. And... Oh, that's a scary noise. Straight. Straight so That is a hell of a... That is generally scary as hell. So open up this next door. And obviously, sort of left and straight slightly till we head this, this next small door. So from here, what you're going to do is head, obviously, straight. Attention, stand clear. Monsters <laughs> monsters making me shit myself right now. And then, of course, press the B button here to crouch. So we're safe for about one couple of seconds or so. Straight through the next door. Take it back now, y'all. One half this time. Okay, jump up. And what you're going to do from here is uh, head to the left. You're going to see where the next door is. There it is. Head through. And head to the right. Oh, there's the monster. Jesus Christ. I actually cracked my pants. Go to the right again. This is where you find the next door. And to the right again. Sorry, I... Even though I knew that was coming, I, I did generally just... Um, yeah, I browned him this time. So, uh, hmm. Lush. Anyway, head through for now for a couple of seconds. Till we get to the other side. And then when we're back out then, obviously you're going straight ahead, opening up the next door. I mean, they take their bloody time with it, don't they? Right, head to the right, then of course to the left to open up the next door. Stop screaming, damn it. You're making me shit it. Ah, there he is again, head straight. There it is. From here, what we're going to do is head to the right, to the left. So there's the hatch we need, so um, get rid of that one. Now with this then, hold the right trigger and then uh, keep using left and right on the right stick until the bar on the right is all the way to the top. So as soon as the green light activates there on the right hand side, now we can just head back out the way we came. 
There we go. And now we're just going to, to the right. <laughs> opening up this door. Man, honestly. And then we're into this little water room section. Now, from here, there is a big ladder. There's two ways you can do this, okay? There's a big ladder on the right. Just to the very right of where we are now. What you can do is climb up there. Walk across the beams. Um, jump onto another platform. Um, jump down to the access shaft and escape. Or you can do what I'm doing, which I just showed you the sort of wrong way to do it. So basically, if you fall into the water, or keep falling into the water, sort of head back out on yourself and climb up this little ladder again. But what you're supposed to do, when we climb up, you're going to have to run, jump, and jump to the left so that you can just about make it there. And that is how you do that this way. Again, that might be a very tricky jump, but like I said, um, if you can't be asked doing that, there's a big ladder to climb on to the right, just go over um, a little other ladder and then you can make your way down. That's how you do that part. So, anyway, here we are then. M emergency flush in, opening, uh, pulling the lever, sorry. Heading back up the way we came. And from here, what we're going to do is head to the left to die. Hooray! So, by the way, that whole uh, thing with the jump in water thing right there, that was supposed to be a time-saving measure. But, again, I probably cost myself about eight minutes trying to just um, uh, jump over instead of just climbing up the ladder on the right. Anyway, whatever you decided, we're all good. We can now carry on. Now, uh, more towards the sort of end of the game here, it starts to turn into more of a... It's sort of a walk-in sim. And a lot more cutscenes happen than it has been more action oriented at the beginning of the game. Uh, but for now, we're just going to follow the linear path just above us. You're going to see this is basically a minefield right now. So, death, death is not an option. Um, what we can do, head to the right, sort of slightly to the right. What you're going to see then is this sort of big rock right in front of us. You can see lights off into the distance as well. So, that is what we're going to need to do. A couple of little sort of puzzles uh, in this next room as well. So, uh, I mean, hey, you're slamming it so far, aren't you? Aren't you, you little... Alright, it's here. Whatever the hell that's supposed to mean there, I don't know. But anyway, climb up. Okay, there we are. Right. See the manual override? Get rid of the hatch. What you're going to need to do is press the red button. You're supposed to uh, pull the lever down as well, but I forgot to do that now. That's fine. Uh, so do that. Interact with these two um, valves. Turn them to the right. Both of them to the right, as far as they'll go. To the right again, push this lever down. Okay, and now what's supposed to happen is your Omni tool is supposed to work. But of course, I forgot to push the one lever down on the first section, the manual override. So there we go. Make sure to push that one down. Flush it away. Flush it away, boys. Congratulations. There, right, now we can actually climb up the ladder. That's all good. And for some reason, we can start um, getting ourselves a bit, of a bit of a brain injury by smashing our head on top of that. So... Oh, it's a couple of weeks off work, isn't it, I suppose? But you know what your workplace is like. They'll, um, even if you're dead, they'll still expect you to come in next week. Oh, can't you make it next week? Uh, no, myth. I'm dead. Right, interact with this uh, little... Pu get, well, get rid of it first. Now, basically, the order is, what you're going to do is... Uh, on the top row, the... Obviously, when you flick it down, that means it's on. So, it's... The top row is going to be on, on, off, off. The second row is on, on, off, off. The third row is on, on, off, off. And then the bottom row is going to be off, on, on, on. So, nothing happens yet. That's fine. That's supposed to happen. Turn to the right to have a look at this monitor. Um, excuse me, Mr. Brain Injury Dude. In fact, this, I think, is just a collectible, actually. So, um, let's... No, there we go. The Omni tool. That's what we're looking for. That's what we're trying... That's what we're getting at, mate. Where are we? We're right next to Omicron. A smaller building connected to the main site. Can't you tell? No, my view is pretty limited. There's some heavy restrictions on my system access. Did you find a power suit? Not yet. I'm trying to figure out how to get into Omicron. The big building. 
Oh, okay. Keep up the good work. That's it? You got nothing? So, after old simping, Robot has finished talking right here. Uh, interact with the monitor on the left, choose Omicron. And now what you're supposed to do, uh, interact with quarantine, that's fine. Now you're supposed to put in any code, absolutely any code. Now of course, because I am child, this is exactly how it would go. So let's see, 6969, that would be my code anyway. Although then that would be very predictable and I would get robbed and have no money left. So whatever you think my password is, it definitely doesn't have 69 in it, okay? Right, just getting that clear. So head to the opposite side then. Now, what you're supposed to do is now interact with the garbage, the UBV ZRMSMP, whatever that is. Now, this code may be different. I think this is the only random bit for you. So keep a note of this. For me, it was 1880. But I do believe that's random for absolutely everyone. So go back to the other code, uh, the other uh, bleh, key code thing, 1880 for me, whatever it is for you. Press OK, and that is the Omicron quarantined lifted it did did all right job done and a talk think about it omicron retracted the quarantine shutters lockdown cancelled something wants us to come inside and we want to go inside what's the problem come on let's get going So after all the fun and the drama is done, we're heading down into Bioshock land. Uh, right, we're almost done with this little section now before we head to Omicron. Right, so from here, basically turn to the right is what you're doing. You're going to see this little robot there chilling. Hello. Uh, basically, it's the big giant massive structure directly in front of you. That's exactly where we're heading. So head to the right. Uh, it's not an easy... Thing. What you're supposed to do is actually just jump on top of all the debris right there to get on. If you can't do that, or for some reason you do exactly what I've done here, and balls it up. That's just me all over, isn't it? Balls. Not on my chin, though, luckily. Uh, that's fine. You can just keep on heading up the debris, and eventually it's just going to literally jump you up to the top anyway. So, either way, it's a win-win situation. Right, once we drop down, head through, Omicron yourself up, beep it on. Omicron yourself, Omicron, Omni tool yourself, and into the Omnicron labs we go. So, we got high hopes. Right, so from here, what we're going to do is head through the left door first then, please. Senoritas, thank you. Head up, turn directly around on yourself to the right and head up some more stairs. Head through this first door on the left. And head through this first door on the right. Right, uh, just keep going across. Again, don't panic. There's no monsters about, but they are just being angry. Head to the right and then through to the left. Go and grab this chair. So what we're going to do is actually we're going to place this chair underneath the door. So turn back around and we're going to head through this um, big long corridor as it were. Now, I don't, <laughs> well I will tell you in just a sec. So what we're going to do is open up the door. Now make sure that you've put the chair exactly as I do, okay? So make sure that the chair is facing this way so that the, um, obviously the tallest point of the chair will do that. Because if you put it any other way, the door will crash and close and you'll have to find your own way out. And I didn't actually find out how to do that. So I think it's on the monitor behind where we are now. You actually have to interact with and uh, maybe there's a door release. But I didn't actually do that. So that's why I just left the chair as it is. So we can just make it easier. Again, a little bit of a time-saving measure. Go into the abyss without ending up like a recycled can of soda? You think we'll find one that fits me? I mean, I'm kind of in a suit already. That's been bothering me too. You know how you were transferred from Vancouver? Toronto. From then to now. How could I forget? 
Okay, so we do it again. You want to send me to the future? No, you idiot. I want to transfer your mind into a new body. What? Look, we already know it can be done. We don't need to make it a big deal. It is a big deal, Kath. It's a huge fucking deal. There's got to be something else that can take us down there. But Dunbat at Theta was the only vessel that could take that pressure, and you saw what happened. Then think of something else. Simon, please. You don't have to switch this instant. Just play along for now. If we find something else, then great. If not... I'm not promising anything. Thank you, Simon. Have a look around the room. This is where they would keep the power suits, if there are any left. Okay, so when we're done talking with our simping robot friend right there, interact with this little yellow button. And then we're going to interact with the D pod. The D pod. I know everyone's a big fan of the D. So, interact with the D pod, pull it out. You sort of have to interact with it and then pull it out, sort of. And that'll do that. And that's fine. We'll come back to that a little bit later on. So, one of the power suits is done. Now, what we can do, now I believe, like I said, if the door has closed, if you interact with this monitor, after all this is loaded up, um, I think, I think, what you can do is press the orange button, I think you have to press HPS, activation, and then pod D. Oh, so I think there's something you can unlock it with there, but I do believe the chair is the easiest method to do that. So, anyway, heading back out. And there's a few things that, of course, we're going to have to do as usual. So head to the left here. The right, to the left. Now, what we're going to do then, what you have to do, there are on, there's an upper, there's a midsection, and a lower section. Now, we need to override each um, one. So override this part. Now, what's going to happen is there's go going to be a little puzzle that we're going to do, um, which I should have done now, but I do it on the bottom floor for some reason. Because you can't actually override it until we do this little puzzle. So, launching a rerouting utility. Loading. So, thanks very much. Right, uh, so just back out of this for now then. So, what I'm going to do, again, there's obviously ladders. There's obviously stairs that you can go downstairs if you wanted to do that. But again, to save yourself some time, jump up onto this left-hand side sort of railing, as it were. So, get onto the top step. Jump onto the left side of the top railing. And you can just drop down freely while breaking your ankles. There we go. Uh, so what we're going to do is interact with the... There should be another little monitor. There it is. So make sure that it says lower. Now what you need to do then is um, just do a little puzzle. Basically, you have to um, connect all the squares just with one line. So just fast forward at about 25 seconds to see the finished product. So there we go, that is how you do that then. Again, you have to do that. There are probably multiple solutions to do that, but that's the way I've done it. So now that is all the lower section overridden, as it were, and that's all good. So we're gonna do head through the left door. In fact, uh, yeah, we are gonna go through the left door. Go through the next section. And again, this is another little puzzle. So what you have to do is basically just press the A button on each of these ones until they're at a specific thing. Again, fast forward the, the um, video 25 to 30 seconds to see the end product. Okay, so this is exactly then what it's supposed to look like. So as long as it's looking like that, then you can interact with the three switches to the left and that'll go pew, 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 et cetera, et cetera, pew, pew, pew. There we go. There's the three of them. So as long as they're looking like that, that'll get the Cortex chip all ejected, dejected, rejected. That sounds like my life in a nutshell. Dejected, rejected, and ejected. No, it's not that bad. So anyway, there's the Cortex chip then straight out of the robot's tushy. And then we're good to go. Right, head straight into the power room, or whatever that room is. Interact with the right-hand side door, and again, go right, so we can start heading back up the uh, the stairs. Head directly around, keep going up again. So obviously, if you didn't do the trick, we're just jumping straight down. Of course, there's always stairs and ladders and things. So head into the next room. We're back here with the power console. Again, what I should have done earlier was just over did the puzzle here and override it. Uh, so again, make sure that it said midsection, and then override that one. Job done. Head back out to the right, to the right again. Go through the door here onto the left. 
magnetic door. Heading up. And up again. Now, I believe there's a monster here. I didn't see one, but I do believe there's one chilling about somewhere. So from here, what we're going to do is head to the right. Go through the door here on the left. And here is the last um, console. So make sure to override the upper. Oh, oh, excuse me there. There we go. So make sure to actually choose the upper section. Remove the lockdown. And everyone's COVID free now. That's how it all went. So go to the right. Out of here. Go to the left. Through the open door. To the left again. And then just keep going. To the right. Now, there is the monster here. Here's where the monster is. Go past him. Interact with this. Grab the battery. There is a battery right there. So turn directly around again. Just go straight past the crying monster. Sorry that you're having a hard day, pal. Um, go back to where you came. Go left here. Then left again. And then sort of up the stairs. Out of this little section. To the right. And we're back in the safety zone. There we go. So interact. Poison the well. Oh, don't poison the well. So what I'm actually trying to do now is just jump all the way down. So we're just trying to go back to the first floor. So again... If you think it's easier, just head down the stairway. But if not, make a jump for it, jump on top, and then just jump all the way down. Life's a bit easier that way. So, right, what we're going to do now, we need to head through. We need to find the clean room. Now, the clean room is going to be um, directly behind where the terminal is. So, there it is. There's, there's the terminal. So, straight in front of us now is going to be the clean room. Do you know why? Because you're dirty. Yeah, too dirty to clean my act up. Ladies, gentlemen, nah, 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 nah. and we all know I've said it before, dirty was a teenage boy's dream to paradise when there was no internet available, or not much internet available. So, this is another little section where we are going to sort of cheat our way a little bit now. I say cheat, it's basically just saving a bit of time. So, what you have to do, um, you have to go and do a whole bunch of things, get another chip, etc, etc, but... What we're actually going to do is grab this chair, put it di basically directly in front of the glass cabinet, not to smash it, but there's like a tiny little gap right in the very top. So what you're supposed to do then, put the chair in such a nice, neat and orderly way that you can just jump up. So as you can see, me, me fail, <laughs> me fail English, that's impossible. So jump up. Again, you're going to have to put the chair maybe a little bit closer and enough. And there you go. So you should have just in about a little bit of a gap so you can reach your hand in and somehow get this big chunky bit of structure gel out. So, hey, I didn't make the rules. I just merely, <laughs> well, we're just merely getting past them. You know, saves a bit of time and, you know, nobody's got time these days. Everyone's too busy getting offended by things. No time to mess around with video games. Nah, just joking. So when we got the structure gel anyway, we're heading back into the middle section here. So screw this, and make a run to the left, to the left again, monsters here, keep going to the straight. You know, I actually forgot that part happened then, so, um, so again, I just trapped them. Crouch down, now I don't think the monster's actually going to come through, but if you want to, you can just get rid of the chair. Uh, he can't actually, he can't actually do that bit, so that's fine. So we're all good. So yes, I did forget that part happened. So yeah. so open up the doorway. Now what you need to do is put the battery here. Um, the, basically the battery and the structure gel. That's all we're doing. So put the battery down to where the back is. Don't worry, it'll work. Okay. There we go. And then obviously put the structure gel right where his head is. There we go. So where his head is supposed to be flashing. Are right, we good? Oh, man, we're all good. So we're just helping a robot come back to life. Aren't we just... Aren't we just fantastic? So, what are you going to do then from here? Uh, that bit's fine for now. So what you need to do is go to the terminal behind you. Interact with it. Go to HSP... HPS activation. The bottom one, obviously. And then, of course, pod D. Everybody loves a the pod D, eh? I can't believe we're doing this. It will be fine. Then why don't we put you in the suit? I was going to suggest that if you refused. You'd go without me. I need to do this, Simon. This is important. I need to launch the Ark. You'd really do it? Change body? Yes. If you want to stay here, I'm not going to stand in your way. 
I don't want to tell you what to do. What would be like before? Close my eyes and then... And then open them again. All right. Let's do it. Thank you, Simon. Go sit in the pilot's. So yeah, I don't know if you can tell, this is kind of a long cutscene here. So as soon as the door opens up, inter go through, interact with the, uh, the thing on the right here. Now what you need to do then is put down frequency to 1, offset to 5, and amplitude to 7. So that's 1, 5, 7, lock the perimeters, get in the seat for another long cutscene. Or another long part of dialogue anyway. Sorry about any it's like having a picture taken. But with the most expensive camera in the world. You know, Indians thought photos would steal their souls. In this case, they'd be right. <laughs> Copy completed. There must be something wrong. Can't you run a diagnosis or something? What was that? No, I it's just... Why was it still talking? It's the same like before. Catherine, why was he still talking? That's how it works, you know that. What do you mean? You know it's not magic. You were copied. The sleeping Simon in the seat was copied, and now you are here, just like Simon lived on in Toronto. God damn you, Kath. Two Simons? There can't be two Simons. What did you think would happen? That you were going to take my mind and put it into another body, like a brain transplant. I'm sorry, it wouldn't work that way. You realize how messed up this is? Please, I didn't mean to upset you. How did you expect me to react to this shit? Please stop. You're fucking disgusting. What's gonna happen to him? He'll sleep for a while, a few days. And then what? Wake up in this fucking nightmare again? All alone? That's so cruel. Well, what do you want me to do with him? Make friends? Let him know that we have to leave him behind when we go into the abyss? What if... What if he didn't need to wake up? You'd do that? I don't know. Maybe. There. I set it up for you. Hit the switch if you want to drain his battery. He'll die within a minute. I'd rather not stay plugged in. Bruh! Now the story starts getting crazy. So pick up the Omni tool, head through, and we're going to go into the descent. Now this one is basically, this next sort of level, it's basically just one long bit of cutscene. It literally takes, you know, six, seven minutes worth of cutscenes here and dialogue. So, it's chilling and we get a new U achievement. Since, I mean, <laughs> you know what? Would you, I, I genuinely wonder, would you be happy if your mind, if your body just keep crapping out on you, would you mind, your mind, being transferred into just different bodies or different robots? Mate, if it keeps me alive forever, then, uh, hey, keeps me alive and talking crap on video game guides forever. I think we're all in agreement right there, potentially. So, <laughs> head to the right. <laughs> anyway, as we get out of here, head to the left. Again, I shit myself down. I thought that was a monster and it was a piece of seaweed. That's how... Honestly, that's how much of a bit of a fanny I am at uh, video game horrors, to be honest. Horrors, I'm just not good with, generally. So, <laughs> jump down anyway. Now, what you need to do then is... Put your Omni tool in, and as you can see on the right-hand side, you've got ACR and Passengers. What you need to do is put ACR to descend, and then passengers to one. Take a seat, flip the lever to the left, take a seat, and begin the descent. So, remember, it's AC passengers to one, ACR to descend, flip the lever to the left, take a seat for lots of unskippable dialogue. Simon, I killed at Omicron. What do you think, Catherine? Is there a heaven full of redundant copies of the same people? Is there someone up there who called me an imposter? It's dumb luck, right? I 
and woke up in the right body. I basically flipped a coin, and if I had called the wrong side, I'd be rotting away at Omicron. I mean, there's nowhere to know, right? You didn't hit the make sure Simon wakes up in the right body switch, did you? Not that you would know. I mean, he would still claim to be the right Simon. Christ. This is awful. We did an awful fucking thing. And you wouldn't mind. Why would you? How could you know that it's not me, the me that I am, the same that I've always been? Let me say something. I don't want to think. Please. I don't know what to say. I don't want to upset you. Say anything. <laughs> when I was little, I used to climb the stairs all the way to the top of the building. And I can still feel how I had to, you know, tuck my arm so I could push the heavy steel door open. Well, the first time that I dared go up there, I stepped out onto the roof and watched the smog rise and fall over Taipei. I got all the way up to the corner ledge and, you know, I felt the warm wind in my hair and the sun was setting and the streets below were shadowed by the tall buildings. The people pushing through the crowd flowed like paint from an artist brush. Street food vendors filled the air with aromas of all my favorite foods. For a brief moment, I felt connected to the world in a way that I never had before. It was the most profound feeling of comfort and sense of belonging I could ever hope for. I really never felt the same way again, but I went up to the roof many times after. I'm not religious, but I can see why people would be. The privilege of being makes a strong case, at least every once in a while. Do you still feel that sense of awe? Even like this? Things are different, but we're still here. What's the point of going on? Everyone's gone. All the people still <laughs> left are digital copies trapped in computers at the bottom of the sea. We'll never be able to rebuild or reclaim what we were. Are you really so unhappy being what you are, or is this about the man who went for a scan a hundred years ago? Both, I guess. When I was back in Toronto, even the worst case, the darkest futures I could predict, they at least included my previous life somehow. I feel so uprooted. There's nothing here that I recognize, nothing that makes me feel like I belong. Even if we make it to the Ark, would it be any different? I'd still be alone. No friends. No family. You could make new friends. So one little thing that we have to do, they just sort of added it in, you know, to make it more tense, he goes. And actually it is tense, because if you were going halfway down the lift or something and it just crapped out on you like that, you would crap him, wouldn't you? So all we got to do then, it's, it's only a little tiny thing that we've got to do here anyway. So when we jump up, there's going to be a ladder to our right, so climb up the ladder. And all we have to do then is open up the fuse box and plug the dislodge plug back in. So, uh, you know, I appreciate the fact that you're trying to make it scary, but the fact that a little plug just came out, well, that's more of an inconvenience than it is scary, isn't it? So, there's the plug. Pop it back in. Jump back down. Um, <laughs> sit down and enjoy the rest of the cutscenes. Really testing the limits of my suit. Don't worry. It should hold. Comforting. It will hold. Does... does time freeze when you're not powered? Time feels omitted. What's the difference? I don't feel like I'm being held back or hindered. And I don't have the opportunity to reflect on the time I'm missing. It's simply missing. Sounds like sleeping without the dreaming. Yes. But generally you anticipate when you're about to sleep, and there's a natural continuation since we tend to wake up where we went to sleep. My experience is more like an ever-changing moment that never really seems to find closure. Sounds kind of like a movie being edited live. I suppose so. I guess it sounds exciting, but it really keeps me activated to the point of exhaustion. <sighs> it's rough. Could be worse. Could be a time traveler stuck in a body made from black goo. That'd be the worst. Oh, 
did it! Ah, oh, Jesus Christ, mate. I couldn't be doing anything then, you dirty kid. Jeez, I was meditating alone. Leave me be. Closing in on the ocean floor. Good, not sure the climber can take it much longer. Okay, so this is the Omega Sector. It's about an acre of the abyssal plan used by Pathos 2. I expect we'll have to do some walking before we reach town. You haven't been here before? Not in a way that'll help us. Right, the other you has been here. We're following in your old footsteps, Cat. When I had footsteps, you could still be down here. So we're on the path to Tau. Now, this one is again more of a sort of walk in big walking part but it's just a case of having to follow the lights because it can get very windy and dark so um obviously get your omni tool swipe it to get the hell out of your tear again no monsters in this bit apart from i think the big big creature or something will fly past you or whatever jump off Whee! ankle crushes superhero landing he just did a superhero landing <laughs> so head straight as you can see, we're straight into the darkness. Toggle your flashlight on, of course. Doesn't help much in this area, in all fairness. Uh, so just keep going straight. Um, obviously, what we're going to see is this big sign directly in front of us now. So pull the lever down. And that just lights up some more lights upon along the path light. So follow the light path path light. So we've just hit an observatory then. This is where the lights stop. We go beyond this light here. You can see a little green light just chilling, flashing in the distance. So if you go past this green light on the left, just keep going straight. And eventually you can just see in the distance there the next set of lights that we can follow. So again, it's extremely easy to get lost. But if you see some lights, that's fine. Uh, be warned. Some some lights can be an anglerfish, which can obviously kill you. Not in normal mode, though. So just head towards this last light right here. And then what you're going to do is just follow. You can see the green light on the floor. Uh, I just got stuck in a rock there or something. So th there's the green light on the floor. So follow this green light. There should be like the rock next to you or whatever that is right next to you. And in the distance again, you can see another white flashing bright light. Again, it obviously gets very annoying with the wind and the darkness. But, you know, that's the ocean for you, mate. Again, so just keep going straight for the time being, following the uh, white lights. And finally, after what seems like a hell of a long and forever walk, we come to this little TVSC building. So head to the right, head to the right again, and you're going to see this lever that we can just pull down to the once. <laughs> to the once. <laughs> My English is failing me and possibly today. I head back out to the left, and you're going to see like this little monitor. Now, what you're going to do is follow the robot. There's a robot that we need to do, so... What you have to do is interact with it by pressing the right trigger rather than the A button, of course. Select control, select tau. And then we can exit out. And like I said, we're going to follow the robot closely along the path. 
Um, if you end up missing the robot somehow, you can just select the recall button on the, ter on the same terminal screen. So follow the robot for now, and then what's going to happen is when we get to a new set of lights, we're going to follow them into a cave. But again, it's very easy to miss it. So for the time being, just follow the robot. Don't blink. <laughs> So then, you're going to see the light on the floor. You can see the one light. There's the other set of lights on the floor. So when you do that, make sure to head towards these lights. There they are. Little green lights on the floor. So just keep heading to the right. There we go. Oh, thank you. That was a nice bit of, um, that was a nice bit of light right there. Head left here into a cave. So this is where, by the way, if you went towards the white ones, there's an anglerfish there. So there we go. But anyway... As soon as you've done that, just keep heading through the cave. This is an, ar an arachnophobid's nightmare, by the way. So if you're scared of spiders, then probably just keep walking straight, but close your eyes for the next minute or two. <laughs> now, just imagine you're sleeping. Now, some of these spiders, again, Australians, this won't affect Australians. They're not fannies like the rest of the world. Um, now, these spiders, it's mad, isn't it, that when you've been sleeping, spiders this size have been hanging above your bed and actually crawl inside you and you eat the spiders. This big. Incredible, isn't it? <laughs> I am douchebag. I'm sorry. I'm sorry to just crap you up. Especially if you're playing this in the night. And Oh, there was the anglerfish, by the way, on the left that we just nipped past. Um, <laughs> so, just keep heading straight again. Stupid fish. Stupid fish. You go squish now. So, just keep heading through the lights. Literally, all you're doing is going towards the white lights for the time being. And again, I do apologize if I've just... Um, you know, make sure that there's no big giant, giant spiders in your room tonight. Again, this does not apply to Aussies, because they are kings and queens of the spiderific world. Now, it may look as if there's nowhere to go, but from here, just turn slightly to the left. Turn slightly to the left, and you can see where the next one is. And finalicious, we have made Tau. So we've just been beaten up by anglerfishes. Giant spiders are just crawling down our throats and dying while we're asleep. So then the next time you take a poop, you just pooped out a big, giant, massive arachnophobic spider. Uh, arachnophobic. Uh, arachnid. Yeah, see, I tell you, my English is still fantastic. Always will be. Always won't be. Apparently, as a Welshman, it's because I'm too busy doing sheep. But um, doing and then eating sheep, so yeah. Anyway. Here we are then, we are into Site Tau. So, again, if you're playing on normal mode, there is a monster that will obviously try and follow you around. Um, of course, what you have to do is open up these circular doors, open up a bunch of doors, and just try and run away. That's the majority of the thing. So, keep heading straight, and then to the right is going to be the circular door. So, hit the button. It's going to take some time, though. So, obviously, if you're on safe mode, you can just stay here. I'm just going to show you what you'd need to do if you were on normal mode, okay? Because uh, I'm a nicer guy like that. Uh, so, what you'd have to do, because the monster's about... Go behind you and interact with this door. 
Of course, the monster is going to appear in random spots as well, so obviously just be aware of that. But open up this next door. Open up this next door. And then open up the next door. So obviously what you can do then, you've just basically got this whole thing. If the monster appears, like he's going to appear for me... Um, to the left, there he is. So, so we've just... Uh, there we go. So we've done enough there to avoid the monster that time. So head through the circular door when it's open. And then go down to the left-hand side here. And then to the... Um, no, straight. Sorry, it's so a straight. Open up this door. So open up that one. Head to the left. And there is the next circular door. So again, interact with that. It's going to take some time again. The monster will appear. So head to the left of where the circular door was. Open this bit up. And then what you can do, the monster is... Basically, what the, what's going to happen is the monster is going to work, uh, come through the same door that we just went past. So, obviously, what you normally do on normal mode is just hide, wait until he goes away, and then that's job done. But, of course, what we're going to do is just nip past him. He moves out of our way. So, thank you so much, by the way. <laughs> I appreciate you moving. Head through the big circular door, of course, when it's opened. Go straight through. Hit the way through. And climb up the ladder. There we go. Right, we're actually going to be coming up to our... Uh, the only missable achievement in the entire game. Head to the right. Run, run, run. Straight through. And just drop down. Ain't got time for climbing. Death monsters want to eat us out. But not in a good way. Head straight through again. There we go. Nice little checkpoint there. Beautiful. And here we are into the main section. So turn directly to the right. We're going to open up this door... Not going to go through it yet. We'll come back to that in just a bit. So turn to the right again. Open up this doorway. And then open up the next door. Man, why do they just leave all doors open? Right, what we have to do then in this room is go to um, door locks. And then interact with the very top right-hand side one. That is where our... Or what the last human alive is. This is the last person that is ever alive on Earth. Uh, for some reason, she's under sea instead of living it up large. So that's the infirmary. So after you've unlocked that, go back, go straight ahead to the right. This door may be locked, by the way, closed. So I obviously edited it, opened it up already. But anyway, once you've opened it up, head up to the ladder. We have to leave. Yeah, that'd be nice, but how? How, damn it? Right, before you interact with the machine on the left, interact with and speak to Sarah Lindwall. Sarah Lindwall. Anyway, this is how you get the Endangered Species Achievement, and this is the only missable achievement in the game, so enjoy her, well, until she dies. <laughs> Most of them are up on the plateau. You mean at Omicron? Yeah. There's no one alive at Omicron. You've been there? I've been all over. The power plant at Upsilon, the ruins of Lambda, the abandoned Delta, Theta, You've been to Theta? There's not a lot left of Pathos 2. And, uh, I'm the only living person you've met. <coughs> you mean I'm the last living human on the planet? I'm sorry. Who are you again? Simon Jarrett. Stationed at? Nowhere. I, I used to work in a bookshop in Toronto. Long story. Then what the hell are you doing here? I'm trying to find the Ark. Why would you? How do you know about that? I've heard it's the last hope for mankind. Damn right it is. Now what do you want with it? Take it to the gun at Phi. Launch it into space. That was the plan, all right. I've been guarding it ever since we brought it back to Tau. I just couldn't bring myself to let go. To tell you the truth. I don't have the strength to argue. And I certainly don't have the time to wait for the next sentient thing shuffling through here. Go ahead. Take it. Thank you. I mean, to be fair, mate, you're not exactly looking like you're going to get back to the surface anytime soon. So, um, she says you could kill me. Simon says, hey, <laughs> good one. But we're actually going to do that. Sorry, sorry, Sarah, mate. Jump in your mind, I'll chuck you in one of the robot bodies. Anyway, that is the Ark. That's what you're going to grab. So, uh, before we leave, before we leave, we are going to kill her. In fact, no, actually, we're going to open up the lift first. Sorry. So, open up the lift there on the uh, right-hand side, the little white button. 
Eventually, that's going to open up the compact freight lift. There it is. So now you can just interact with that and put the arc in. Interact with the white button again. We are we're basically going to just pop it downstairs, so that's all good. Right, so what you're going to do then, interact with this machine, disable it. Remember to get the endangered species first before this. Would you stay with me, please? Ah, oh, but would you look at the time I've got to, I've left the oven on. Oh, look, I've left my, ah, oh, jeez, I've left my daughters in school. I got it. No. Sorry, sorry, Sarah. We've, we've got achievements, mate. I ugh, can't. Have fun dying on your own. That sounds harsh. Anyway, head all the way back down the ladder. And what you need to do is interact with the white button again. That will get the, um, that'll put the arc down. So again, we are bar stools. We did leave a, the last person ever alive to die on her own, but, um, mate, it's tapping me watch here. We've got stuff to do. After you've got the arc, head through the door, the airlock door. Now she blows. And we are literally about 20 minutes or so now from the end of the game. Don't have a lot, really, of gameplay left to do now, so... Woohoo! Ah, no, what is be happening now? What is beef happening? Right, anyway, so... Eventually, it's going to open up. <laughs> eventually. So what we need to do, then, is place the arc in the middle platform here, just chilling. And then, all you got to do is... We're going to attach. So put that one on, attach it to the cargo, so that it is all attached. Then we can snipe the... Snipe. Bloody hell, man. Swipe the Omni tool. The pressure difference is going to be a bit nuts. So what we're going to do then is just interact with and pull three pipes. So the arc is just above. There it is. So it's not on the platform anymore. So make sure you've done that first. Then interact with the three candy-looking cane pipes. And that'll end this part. So after we wake up after the death part, oh the death part again, plenty of death parts in this game, huh? Go straight through and we have to just get rid of some debris, which again is just a little ploy to um, keep the game going for an extra 10, 20 seconds or so. So just get rid of all the debris, the debris, and head your way little through. Okay, this kind of can seem linear, but again it can be easy to get lost, so for the time being, we are just heading straight. We're gonna do some crouching, some jumping. Oh yeah. So when we see Dr. Frankenstein right here, what we're going to do is head to the right. There's a little gap in the right-hand side that we can crouch down and crawl through. A little bit of a fork in the path here. We are going to fork and go left. So head to the left here.
Tell me what you want. I need you to stop the WoW. What? How? The enslaved protein solution around your suit is the news for which the WoW will hang itself. What are you talking about? As soon as I came to the Omicron, I tried to tell them to make the toxin that would make the WoW with it. But they didn't understand. They put it inside the cabinet. It was so infuriating. They needed to take it to Alpha. Fountainhead of the misery we created. In a girl. She figured it out. She was going to take care of it. The wild shrieked. Sorry mate, I've got some bad news for you. You're calling this the heart? I'm telling you exactly now. This don't look like no heart. This genuinely looks like <laughs> after you've just eaten the biggest meal of your life. Oh yeah. That ain't that <laughs> that looks like that thing's about to explode. And Broski, it ain't no heart. So pop your hand inside the um the, the heart, apparently. Destroy the only one who's immune to the new pattern. Don't worry, I'll make it quick. Oh God! So then, instead of dying, what we're gonna do is run like hell. Now, apparently, I think even on safe mode, this guy who is chasing after you can catch you. So, all we're doing though is just keep running straight. So, don't look back for anything, just keep running straight. And then after we finally make it, after running all that way, we are now on to the final part of the game. Slap in your Omni tool, and there are no more monsters left. So now, again, if you've been playing up till normal mode on this point, you can literally breathe a sigh of relief. made it here in one piece. Christ, what the hell happened? 
happened to your arm? It's complicated. I just need to know one thing. <laughs> I'll have both my arms in the Ark, right? Yes, of course. Are you okay, though? Can you do stuff? Yeah. Let's just get this over with. Did you find the Ark? I did, but I kind of lost it on my way here on an automated tram thing headed to Phi. So it should be around somewhere. That's great. Let's go get it. One more achievement you should have left. So, turn directly around from where you were, go straight, and obviously open up, interact with, and open up the door. And eventually... Oh, well, thank you very much. Right, drop down the ladder. Come in. There we go. Ankle breaking again. Superhero landing. So here we are then. This is the main part that we need to go in. So head through the left-hand side door thing first. Interact with this battery. So go ahead, grab the battery. Turn to the left as we exit. And just keep going straight to the opposite, uh, opposite end of the room. And you're going to see somewhere else we can place the battery. So, well, place in the battery. And then what we can do is interact with the button right next to it. There he goes. There he goes. And turn and twist and stretch and flight. Whatever flight means. Right, there is the arc. Da -da. So we've grabbed the arc. Job done. If you're quick enough, you can actually grab the battery again to have both. But apparently that's not going to happen. So what you need to do is go back to the big main room. Put the arc down. Come back and grab the battery. So, you know... I mean, literally, he could have just popped it down for a second, put the battery in his pocket, but hey, what do I know? So, head back to the main room. All the way to the rightmost door, so we can open it up. Straight through. And this is where the Ark's going to live. So, pop that in. But, of course, we now need to go back to get the bloody battery. So, thank you. It's like we don't have pockets, even as robots. So, head through to the right again, of course. Head to the opposite end of the room, grab the battery, and then go back to where the Ark was. And on the right-hand side is where the battery placing part is. There we go. So pop that one in. So go ahead, interact with the, oh, where the arc is right there, of course. There is going to be another little powerful power uh, monitor. So just uh, close the payload, the payload B. I'll tell you what, I, I, can't wait to, I can't wait to take a nap. My brain is, is falling out of my skull right now. Right, so after this bit then, head through to the other side of the room now. Go to the right, right again, head up the ladder. We've literally just got one more little thing left to do. <laughs> and that's what happens when you stick your hand up a cow's butt. Your hand gets um, bitten off rapidly, apparently. Unlucky mucker. Right, so here we are then into the top of the main room. Go straight. Aren't you forgetting something? How are you going to get us on board the Ark? Don't we need to make another scan? Turn to the right and interact with this one circular door. You can have a little look around at other ones, but that's the only one we can open up while we wait for Mrs. Simp Robot to yes, stop so chatting. For you to the arc while operating the gun. Two birds and all that. Now, take the Omni tool and plug it in next to the seat, and I'll guide you through the final steps. Arg mate, there she blows. Right, so pick up the Omni tool, head to the right out of the circular door that we opened up earlier on. Uh, so obviously swipe your big tool of omniness. Go straight, and then we're going to head right up a set of stairs right here. There she blows, baby. Put your Omni tool in. 
And this is now literally the last bit of gameplay that we're going to do. So head into the chair. Again, a little bit of unskippable scene and dialogue is going to happen before we can do that. Comfortable? As good as it's going to get. Okay, I'll have to fade the seat. You should be able to use the machines to load the bullet you assembled. How do you operate this thing? Don't know, I never tried this one. But pilot seats are notoriously easy. And you know what? I did actually just lie to you. We're going to do the bit of gameplay before the next part happens. So, what you got to do then, you control this robotic arm. So what you need to do with the right stick is move it. When it goes on top of the missile there, right at the sort of bottom of the train of the rails or whatever that is, uh, and the uh, crosshair goes green, hold the right trigger to put it down, and then let go. That'll pick it up. Then move it all the way to the right-hand side. You can just see what looks like a kind of little ramp. And then as soon as you see a green cross here on it, and you can hear the noise, um, press and hold the right trigger again. So that that's what it should look like. As soon as you got it there, press the right trigger. That'll drop it down. And that is pretty much murder she wrote. That is all she wrote, guys and gals. Guys and gals. Mm. Okay, ready when you are. Just hit the button and we're off. But we need to transfer our minds to the Ark. We also need to make sure it launches at all. So I tied them to a single switch. Just push the button and we're off. Here we go. No turning back. Thank you, Simon. Don't mention it. It's an amazing thing you did. And I want you to know I appreciate it. Time. 20 seconds. What's the matter with the upload? Just give it a second. I thought you guys would have better bandwidth than the future. Ten seconds. Nine. Eight. Seven. Six. You gotta be kidding me! Five. Four. Three. Come on, load! Two. Yeah, yes! Fuck yeah, we made it! <laughs> One. stars we're here no we were getting on the ark i saw it it finished loading just before it launched yeah i saw then why are we still here simon i can't keep telling you how it works you won't listen you know why we're here you were copied onto the ark you just didn't carry over you lost the coin toss we both did just like simon at omicron just like the man who died in toronto a hundred years ago no 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 this is bullshit we came all this way! We launched the Ark! I know it sucks, but our copies are up there! Catherine and Simon are both safe on the Ark. Be happy for them. Are you crazy? We're gonna die down here with those fuckers living at large on a spaceship! They're not us! They're not us! I'm sorry you feel that way, Simon. I'm proud of what we did. We made sure that something of the hundreds of thousands of years of human history survived, that something lives on. Oh, fuck this! Fuck! Fuck this! Fuck you! Fuck you, Catherine! You lied! And I believed in you! I trusted you! You said we're getting on the fucking Ark! We are on the Ark, you idiot! I didn't lie! I can't be responsible for your goddamn ignorance! You fuck! fuck! Catherine? Please don't leave me alone. Catherine? Catherine? Beep, 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 beep. That's it. That's so much done. But there is a little scene that we are going to just... I mean, it's not playing. You're literally... All you're doing... You can press the start button here to get rid of the credits. But, uh, you know, big shout out to everyone who... Uh, who um, I was going to say continues to support the channel then. Who actually uh, made the game because it was fantastic. Um, but there's going to be... This is a little... I mean, obviously, you've, you've just seen how it went with anger, but this is a little extra scene here after the credits. So all you're going to do is just walk forward, and that is literally then the end of the game.
You're going to see what Simon's mind, other mind, gets up to of the copy of Simon. Oh, Mitch, you'd be so pissed off. Catherine? I can't believe we actually made it. Well, we did. I'm so relieved. So, together we made it. Or at least the copies of them did. But that's it then, guys and guys. So that is Soma. That is honestly unbelievable. Even with safe mode on, it was still tense. It was still very atmospheric. It was fantastic all around. Brilliant story. Everything is just awesome about this game. So... But there we go, that's that. So after you, um, after this next scene, what's going to happen is you are just going to get the end achievement. So that should be 10 out of 10, and that should be that. So I'm going to leave it here. So thank you so, so much for watching, guys and gals. I hope you enjoyed the game like I did. I really hope you enjoyed the guide, uh, guide, 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 and that it helped as well. Of course, if it did, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and share with a friend as well. Now this time I'm going to say big shout out to everyone who continues to support the channel on Patreon and through other means of support and things absolute legend so thank you so much i shall see you in the next game pass game guys and gals ba, 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 ba. big love Thank you.